I'm just going to introduce um, the councillors that are on the committee today, starting with Diane. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Diane Hurst and I am a councillor for Richmond Ward. Bob? Uh, hello, my name is uh, Councillor Bob McCann, I'm Councillor for Bateman Ward. Chris? Councillor Chris Rosling Josephs, Councillor for the Baton Ward. Roger? You're muted, Roger. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I'm Roger Davison and I'm Councillor for Ecclesall. Thank you. Uh, Tony? Hi, I'm Tony Dams and I'm Councillor for Southie Ward. Jack? Good afternoon, Councillor Jack Clarkton, Stocksbridge in the Upper Dom. Thank you. Uh, Andrew? Uh, good afternoon, Councillor Andrew Sanger, Councillor for Forward Ward. Peter? Uh, I'm Peter Garbutt. I'm Councillor for Netheredge and Sharrow Ward. And last but not least, Mike. <laughs> good afternoon. I'm Councillor Mike Chaplin uh, for the South of the Ward. Lovely, thank you. Right then, I'm going to hang over to Craig, who's going to go through some housekeeping arrangements for me. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so thank you to everyone for logging on to this Zoom video conference of the Planning Committee. I'm the Democratic Services Officer for this meeting and I'm assisted by Paul Robinson, uh, my colleague who is host to the meeting. We'll proceed to introductions uh, and housekeeping in a moment, but just a couple of points. This meeting is a public meeting and in alignment with the new regulations which permit meetings to be held remotely, we will be streaming this to the public via our web pages. And also this may be broadcast by Sheffield Live TV. To make the meeting run as smoothly as possible, please can I ask all participants in the virtual meeting room to leave your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. When you want to speak, please physically raise your hand to the camera, only unmute when the chair indicates that you can speak. Public speakers are permitted and the meeting host will bring speakers into the virtual meeting room at the appropriate time. Once you've spoken for the allotted time, the host will then re return you to the virtual public gallery. Uh, just a few housekeeping points, Chair. Uh, members should have all received and access, have access to the agenda, the officer presentation and the supplementary report. If you've not done so, please let me or the Chair know. Can everyone ensure that all your mobile devices and similar devices are switched to silent? If anybody loses the ability to hear or be heard, please alert the Chair myself or the host as soon as you can and just for the public you may see members looking away from their screens at times this is because they need to look at an additional screen or device uh, which contains their papers at the end of each item a vote will be taken by the committee and the applicant will receive the decision in the usual manner thank you chair thank you and um I uh, also extend a warm welcome to all members of the public and Sheffield Live and members of the press. Craig, have we got any apologies for our absence? Uh, yes, Chair, we have. Um, I've got apologies from councillors Price, Rippon, Law and Naz. Thank you. And we um, have a substitute. Councillor Chaplin is substituting for Councillor Price. Thank you. We have no exclusions of the press, uh, public or press, is that correct? Yeah, That's okay. Correct, yeah. Lovely. Uh, number four, declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations of interest on anything on the agenda today? Yeah, I've, re I've received correspondence um, emails from, from people. Okay, Councillor yeah. Chaplin, that's fine. We owe it. Yeah, that, that's normal. There would just be for me to yeah. declare, um, if you could mute your microphone now, please, Councillor Chaplin, me to declare on the item 7A, which is 
the Clow. Um, while I was cabinet member, I actually signed off the asset of community value. This was an independent cabinet member decision. At no time did I actually meet with any groups or pay any participation in any campaigning. I'm completely open minded at this and I've checked with legal and it's absolutely fine for me to actually chair and participate in the debate. Could I have that confirmed and clarified, please? Patricia. Uh, uh, hi, Councillor Dunn. Um, yes, I can clarify that um, you've taken legal advice and that you're right to sit because you were acting in the function of a portfolio holder um, for a non-planning related matter and didn't consider matters of planning judgment or the details of this application. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is everyone okay with that? That's Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, item five is minutes of the previous meeting. And these start on page five on your agenda, if you want to get those up. I'll take them page by page. OK, page five. Page six. Page seven. OK, so can we all agree that these are a true and accurate record? Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, nice and quick. OK, right. Um, the site visit did take place yesterday. Um, OK, and now we'll move on to the main part of the agenda, which is item 7A, which is the application number 19 stroke 02 stroke 30 stroke FUL, the ploughing 288 Sandergate Road, Sheffield, S10, 5SE. Okay, if I could hand over to Dinah to go through the presentation. This is on page 11 of your agenda as well. Thank you, Chair. I'm just going to share the screen. Okay. Lovely. Uh, bear with me. This application relates to the site of the Plough Inn, which is a vacant pub on Sandergate Road, which closed in April 2016. This is the site here, and the surrounding area is largely residential in character, um, though the site sits to the north of the uh, Hallam Football Club, Hallamshire Football Club grounds. Um, and the Church of, the, of St Francis of Assisi, which is here. Um, and also to the, to the uh, west of the site uh, is, a, is a former dwelling house, which is now in office use. So this is in office use, and this is the car park. And I'll just show you some photographs of the site. So this is the pub, the Plough Pub, uh, looking east along Sandergate Road. This is the uh, entrance to the Hallam Football Club. This one is the uh, east facing elevation of the office building and a view from the car park over the, to, to the flats to the rear of the pub. Another view from the car park. This is a uh, photograph of the pub forecourt. And these two are views looking west along Sandergate Road. This plan shows the footprint of the uh, existing pub uh, and its relationship in particular with the apartments to the rear on St Francis Close, which are situated at a lower level. Planning permission is sought for the demolition of the plough and the construction of eight contemporary dwelling houses. Um, this application has attracted a significant number number of objections. The plough is an asset of community value and it was registered under the 2011 Localism Act in 2015 when its future became uncertain and because it was considered to further the social well-being or interests of the local community and to have a realistic chance of being able to do so again in the next five years. ACV status can be a material planning consideration. Uh, in circumstances where the interest in a planning application is substantial and the evidence received from representations 
support the case that it was effective as a community facility. ACV status also enables a qualifying community group to trigger a six month moratorium, allowing them to raise funds to purchase the ACV if it comes onto the market. Following an unsuccessful planning application to change the use of the pub to a supermarket in 2016-17, which was supported by a statement from the then owners confirming that it was trading at a loss, the plough was put up for sale. The six month moratorium was triggered by the plough Community Benefit Society and funds were raised, but they were ultimately outbid by the applicant. Following the sale of the plough, it was removed from the ACV register, but re-registered in April 2018, the panel concluding that there, was, that there realistically remained a range of possible outcomes for the property, including a potential community use. As part of the current application process, officers have satisfied themselves that limited weight should now be given to the pub's ACV status, that reasonable endeavours have been made by the applicant to market the pub as an ongoing concern, and by the previous owners from 2012 to 2016, that a good number of community facilities exist within the local area to further the social well-being and interests of the com local community. They're identified in the report committee, but include uh, pubs, uh, the facilities at Hallam FC, uh, the church accommodation, the Crosspool and District Youth Sports Trust Community Centre around the corner on Caldwell Lane and Stephen Hill Methodist Church. We're satisfied that the plough is not the place where the rules of football were written. This is confirmed to be over 160 years ago on East Bank Road in Sheffield. And that while the existing building makes a positive contribution to the character of the area, it has less than moderate significance as an undesignated heritage asset. In relation to the pro proposed development, the use of this brownfield site for housing, the preferred use of land in this housing area, and the provision of eight family houses is considered to be a moderate benefit. I'll just carry on through some of the slides. The proposed layout responds positively to the street and moves the built form away from apartment buildings to the rear of the site. So as you can see here, the, uh, the footprint of the existing building in red and the uh, proposed development of eight houses uh, in blue. The proposal includes an undercroft car parking area for up to 18 vehicles. Uh, that's these spaces here, plus a number of integral garages um, and raises no highway safety concerns. The architectural response is contemporary, but the scale, form and materials are all considered to be sympathetic to local character. They will be finished in natural stone. And it's considered that the development will not harm the living conditions of neighbouring residents. So I'll leave you with um, these images on screen. Um, and I will just draw your attention to the um, supplementary report. We received 11 additional representations, including one from Olivia Blake MP. Uh, most of the comments raised have already been covered in the committee report. In terms of new issues raised, um, Sheffield and District Camera um, have suggested that the council exercise its powers to compulsory purchase the building in order to avoid further deterioration. Uh, it was suggested that consideration be given to protecting trees on the western uh, boundary of the site. Um, that's the, the opposite end. Um, but the applicant has, the applicant's agent has confirmed that this is not possible due to the proximity of the, the development to these trees, but that a new tree would be planted at the northwestern corner of the site and soft landscaping provided to the edge of the podium deck above the proposed parking area. It was pointed out that there appeared to be no designated bin storage area. Um, and I'll just return to the plan. Um, the applicant's agent has confirmed that each dwelling house will have an area for bin storage adjacent to the rear entrance. So, this, so as you enter the site, you go in, into the undercroft parking area, there are rear entrance doors uh, to each property and this area just inside the door, I think it might be seen better. Um, on these plans is for bin storage. 
and um, this area um, on a subsequent plan that we've that we since received is identified as the bin collection point from where um, Veolia, for example, would collect the bins. Um, there were also concerns from uh, late representations that the plans only showed 12 parking spaces, but as I uh, said earlier, uh, the, 11 park the 18 parking spaces include the integral garages uh, in the basement of all but um, two of the, of the houses. Um, there is uh, an amended condition um, which allows for the, uh, um, the new plan um, to be included in the list of um, approved drawings um, and this identifies the location of the bin storage and collection areas. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. No, no, don't rush. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you. We're all back. Right. We have three speakers um, on this. Uh, we've got two against and one for. Craig, if you could bring Councillor Anne Murphy in, please. That'd be great. Oh, sorry. Go four first. My fault. So sorry. That's right. No. I'm right, aren't I? It is a games first, isn't it? Yeah. It's okay, it's because the name Chair. came up there. I thought I was wrong. Yeah. yeah. Mm? Chair, you, you've got Charlotte Stainton and Councillor Anne Murphy just joined. Okay. We take against first, so we need to take Councillor Murphy first. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, it's through yeah. me when. Yeah. Lovely. Hi, Anne. Can, can, Councillor Murphy, you've got five minutes. You want to get yourself ready? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Lovely. You're and welcome. The Planning Committee, thank you. Um, I dropped off then for some reason. So please. If you drop off, Anne, we'll yes. put and we'll restart. Okay. okay. Lovely. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, as a local councillor for the Crooks and Crosspool Ward and a local resident, someone who lived literally around the corner from the Plough Pub and someone whose family and friends were regulars at the Plough Pub, I want to object to the application by the current owner of the Plough to demolish the Plough Public House on Sandergate Road in Crosspool and, in, and to the planning officer's recommendations. Firstly, there's been a public house on this site since the 1600s. And as such, the historic value of the Plough Pub alone is immeasurable to the residents of Sheffield who care and want to retain as many historic buildings as possible. The loss of the Plough Pub on this site will be a significant loss to the people of Sheffield. Such is the feelings of the Sheffield people, local and across the city, that they have even demonstrated their willingness to support the retention of this landmark building and what it stands for and open this as a pub with their own funds. This pub and site is the heart of the home of world football. And I'll just say that again. This pub and site is the heart of the home of world football. Other cities would be trying to bring the building back to life and promote it as an asset to the city, not tear it apart. Its cricket and football heritage is unquestionable, being opposite the oldest football ground in the world from 1804, the Plough Pub was the headquarters for the Hallam Cricket and Football Clubs and also served as the changing rooms. As the chair of Sheffield, the home of football, the Plough Inn is indisputable link to the beautiful game and its history. 
in relation to Sheffield's football heritage, it's unquestionable and unique. It being cited opposite the second oldest football club in the world, Hallam Football Club. This statement in itself means that this pub is immensely, is of immense community and city value. And I'll say that again. This pub is opposite the second oldest football club in the world, Hallam Football Club. And this statement in itself means that the pub is of immense community and city value. The original plough pub uh, from the 17th century burnt down in 1903 and was replaced by another historic building by Windsor Dixon from a steel making family. There are very few examples of Dixon's architecture left in Sheffield. Secondly, in 2015, with all the historic facts and information in place about the plough, the Crossbow community came together and applied for the plough to be registered as an asset of community value, which Sheffield City Council recognised and agreed to. Similar in 2018, when a further application was required, applied for and granted. When the pub came up for sale and was put on the market by Enterprise Inns, the community came together again and raised enough money to purchase the pub. Of 30 Enterprise. seconds, Anne. Okay, love. All right, yeah. Um, in conclusion, Basically, I'd finally like to say everybody and anybody who values community, please think carefully before supporting the idea that our local environment should be controlled by money and private gains rather than by local interest and Sheffield's unique heritage. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we've now got another speaker again. So that's a Peter Duff. Mr. Duff's on his way in there, Chair. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> I can... Hello. Can you please, Councillor Murphy? Um, yeah. Peter, uh, Mr. Duff, Peter, can you hear me? He's muted. He's on mute, and um, they've got no video. Lovely. Hello, sorry about that. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, welcome, Peter. You've got five minutes. Are you ready? And I can start. Yes. Lovely. Thank you for, okay. asking, for allowing us to speak today. I must say that Councillor Murphy's uh, covered most of the main points, so I won't repeat what she said, except to pick up on a, a couple of other things. Firstly, though, I would like to refer members to the recent history of the site. That three times in the last five years, the local authorities accepted that the plough is an important asset in the Crosspool and Sandygate community. It was listed in ACV in 2015, by the late Councillor Bowler. The planning committee in 2017 unanimously refused change of use when Sainsbury's applied to turn the pub into a supermarket. And in 2018, the plough was again designated an ACV on a panel chair. As Councillor Dunn has already made us aware today. Excuse me, but uh, Mr. Duff, you keep losing sound, so I'm, I'm not sorry. too sure. I'll pause anyway for you. Just, yeah, you keep losing, and I want to make sure all members can hear you. I can't see anything in my end that's, that's the problem, but I'll, I'll plow on. Can you hear me now? Yeah. No, okay. Um, one, of the, one of the main points of the, the officer's report is that negligible weight should be attached to the ACV listing, primarily based on their argument that the pub has been marketed. I think the uh, word used by the officer today is that the current owner has made reasonable endeavours to market the pub. 
Now, those reasonable endeavours consist of actually putting the pub to let for £50,000 annual rent. This is a building that, that has been closed for two years and needed a considerable amount of work done to the interior, and yet they were asking for a rental value of £50,000 per year. Now, the officers put forward one example as comparable to the plough, the Devonshire Arms in Middle Handley as having a rental value of 55000 It's worth uh, pointing out that the Devonshire Arms has a restaurant and seven guest bedrooms, hardly a comparable uh, pub to the plough. Furthermore, in the official report on rent, it says that the £50,000 rent was realistic, but when that research was undertaken into other comparable properties, on the report, the majority, the majority of rental values significantly less than £50,000 per annum. So how on the one hand can the rent be realistic at £50,000, yet the officer's own, own research says that the majority of other comparable properties are on the market at significantly less than the £50,000. So we don't, we don't accept that that high rental value represented a realistic attempt to market the site for the public health. And a couple of other issues as well in terms of bringing the site back into use. An underlying argument in the report is, is the applicant's view of the cost of refurbishing the building, which is now estimated on the applicant's own figures at £450,000. Only three years ago, we as a community benefit society had an independent survey and the cost of refurbishment was placed at £60,000. That massive difference between the, the current 450 and the hour 60 is due entirely to the dilapidation of the building that occurred under the present ownership. The building has not been maintained, it's been left unsecured and the site has been used to sell Christmas trees, to store unregistered vehicles and as a general dumping site. And in fact, the local authority issued an enforcement notice in May of this year, ordering the applicant to tidy up the site and make good some essential works to the pub. I don't think the applicant has acted, has acted uh, responsibly throughout this process, and I would hope that members today make a positive contribution to saving the city's heritage and refusing this application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duff. You're under time as well. Councillor Murphy, could you mute your microphone, please? That's lovely. Um, yeah. OK, we have um, we have one speaker for the application. That is a Charlotte Stainton. Charlotte, welcome. OK, you've got five minutes. OK, thank you. Thank you. The application was submitted in June 2019, and this 12 month process has led to the detailed officer report and recommendation to grant permission. The main issue raising objections relates to the loss of the pub, which is, a registered, which is registered as an asset of community value or ACV. The pub was first listed as an ACV in July 2015, but then closed in April 2016 due to lack of custom. Planning permission was refused in January 2017 for Sainsbury's. That refusal stated that insufficient evidence had been provided about the viability of the pub. Following the refusal of the retail unit, the pub was advertised for sale. The ACV enabled the Community Society six months to bid for the pub. Enterprise inns were, however, within their rights to sell to the highest bidder and the community bid was not successful. The current applicant bought the property in September 2017 and the pub was removed from the ACV register. In April 2018, it was re-registered as an ACV, despite the fact that it had been closed for almost two years at that point. The pub has now been empty for almost five years and has been the subject of significant vandalism, burglary and fly tipping. This previously developed site is within a designated housing area in your UDP and the building of homes in this location is in accordance with your policies. The public house has been marketed to let for almost three years. 
Detailed evidence about the rental figure has been provided and has been scrutinized by the Council's independent valuation expert. In addition, it should be noted that the property was marketed for sale for five years from 2012 by the former owner. Significant evidence has also been provided about the likely cost of repairs. On page 43 of the officer report, it was concluded that the requirement to market the property has been met. On page 44, alternative community facilities in the local area have been highlighted. This includes the community hub and bar directly opposite the site at Hallam Football Club. Your officers have advised that with virtually no realistic prospect of the site being used for a community use and with permitted development rights removed, the site would be likely to fall into further disrepair. The intention of an ACV is not to stifle development, but to give the community the opportunity to bid when it comes on the open market, which they did. You are advised on page 53 that limited weight can now be given to the pub's ACV status. The plough is of some architectural merit, but it is not listed and it is not in a conservation area. The existing pub was built in 1929. Historic England concluded that it is not of special interest in a national context and they have not listed it. The chairman of Sheffield Football Club has confirmed in writing that there is no evidence of any connection between this pub and the writing of the rules of football, which date from 1858, 71 years before the pub was built. No weight can be given to this issue. Your officers have concluded that the proposed design is of a high quality that will make a positive contribution to the character and appearance of the area. The scale and form are sympathetic to the local vernacular and the use of natural stone would tie it in. The properties would be built to high standards of insulation and energy efficiency. There would be two parking spaces per property, as well as two visitor spaces. This is a sustainable location with good transport links. There is no objection from your highway officers. Officers have confirmed there would be no significant loss of privacy, loss of outlook or overshadowing for neighbours. Of the letters submitted by residents, it is the immediate neighbours along St Francis Close that have supported the application. In conclusion, we understand that we are asking you to make a difficult decision given the level of objection. However, in this case, the site offers no community value and there is no prospect of this changing. The pub had already closed for some time when the applicant bought the property and he has tried to let it as a pub. COVID-19 means that there is now even less chance of, a, of struggling pubs reopening. There are numerous other community facilities in the area. The applicant has met all the requirements to provide evidence of the marketing of the property and the cost involved in renovating it. And this evidence has been independently assessed for the council. You've got 30 seconds. Also, thank you. We have also met all the design, highways and other technical requirements. We ask you please to follow the officer recommendation and give your support to the delivery of these high quality homes in this sustainable location. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul, could you remove all the speakers out into the gallery, please? Thank you. Lovely, thank you. If I could pass back to Dinah to respond to the comments made. Dinah. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a couple of key points I think that I just want to reiterate. Um, the existing building uh, it is of character and that's acknowledged in the, in the officer report, but um, the existing public house was built in 1929. Um, and I think the, the history of the site prior to that um, it isn't really an, a, a, a consideration in terms of the, the, the proposal to demolish the existing pub. Um, we, we acknowledge that it makes a, a positive contribution to the character of the area, um, but it, um, it, it has been substantially altered. Um, it was rejected uh, for listing by Historic England um, when uh, a, a call was made uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, we think on balance, 
um, that that uh, you know less than mod less than uh, moderate weight can be given to um, to to protecting it as an undesignated heritage asset. Um, in terms of the football links, uh, as I said, they are. Or there are no uh, links specifically to this pub. Um, as I said, and, and the football rules were written um, 160 years ago, um, and the site uh, of the Hallam Football Club established well before this pub was built. Um, and I think coming, coming back on a couple of points in terms of marketing, um, there was a, a, a point raised by Mr Duff that the £50,000 uh, a year um, annual rent was considered to be um, to was considered to be excessive. Now we did have that independently assessed. Um, we did compare it with other rentals in the the area. Uh, there are other rental uh, property. Uh, there are other pubs with annual rents um, higher than that, or in the region of that, in the vicinity, including the uh, Three Merry Lads on Red Myers Road um, and uh, the Doctor's Order down, orders down on Glossop Road. But the key point is that that the, the site was marketed with an annual rent of in the region of. Fifty thousand um, pounds. That include that's that figure is acceptable because it's a free house. It's not tied to a brewery. Um, bre tied breweries tend to attract lower rents. Um, it came with three bedroom living accommodation on the upper floors, um, and indeed an offer was uh, made at uh, a rent uh, just below that forty five thousand uh, pounds. Not long after it started, it was marketed, but that fell through. Um, for a number of reasons. So um, we and the independent assessor all considered the £50,000 annual rent to be reasonable. Um, there was also a point made about the refurb costs of uh, an estimate of £450,000 that's referred to in the report. Um, now that was a, a, a quote um, sought by the applicant um, to refurbish the building and that included repairs to the building, to the building fabric, um, and works to fit it out, and the quote was based was was provided uh, by a company who, uh, and based on their experience of working with Ember Inns, who um, obviously have a, a, a the level of fit out that the Ember Inns would um, would expect. Now, the applicant has confirmed that he would have paid um, for repairs to the fabric of the building. He wouldn't expect an incoming tenant to pay for those, and that they would only pay for the refit. Um, the internal refit, and that what, the, the amount they wanted to pay would be very much dependent on the type of refit they um, they wanted. Um, so that would vary, obviously. So um, I think I think they're the only points I'm going to come back on. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll now open this up. Uh, sorry, Helen. Anybody else got anything to add before I open it up to questions? To you know? Nothing, Chair. Uh, thank you. Okay, just checking, sorry. Right, I'll open it up to questions. If you'd like to indicate now, I'll take if anyone's got any questions. Councillor Davidson, I've got down. Anyone else? Councillor Clarkson. Councillor Sangar. Councillor Bob McCann. Okay, so I've got everybody that's in, ah, Councillor Chaplin. Okay, so so far, yeah. Okay, I'll go with Councillor Davidson. Councillor Davidson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, the fifty thousand pounds that we've been talking about is that part of a planning consideration because it's a, a, an asset of community value. That, that's the first question. Dinah. It, it, it's. We need to be satisfied that the applicant has made reasonable endeavours to um, to market the property, keep it running as an ongoing concern, and a, and a, and a, 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 a yeah, that's to the benefit of the, the local community. Um, and I suppose the fifty thousand pound figure is part of that process of marketing. Um, but we've been satisfied that that was a reasonable figure, um, and that it wasn't uh, putting people off. Yeah. Um, taking the the, the premises off. But economics doesn't work like that. It's supply and demand. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, was there a reasonable? Uh, did they put it up to tender the people? Uh, um, uh, uh, you know, to, to pay what price they felt was um, was adequate. Uh, I'm not quite 
not sure that's how it works when you're selling or, or, or offering a property for rent. Um, the, the, it was marketed for offers in, offers in the region of £50,000. And as I said, an offer was accepted at £45,000. And then rejected. Um, and that would, no, that it was rejected. Rejected. And that it fell through. Uh, this, this is the problem um, uh, with, with these kind of figures because it doesn't seem to me that it was put on an open market. That it was offers around, and uh, you know, you know that that in itself may put um, uh, put potential people off. But one of the things that uh, I, I want to come on to is is the neglect of the building. Was that uh, deliberate neglect on the part of those who own the building, uh, so that there would be uh, a deterioration factor? you know, make, make it more costly to renovate. Uh, I mean, that's a difficult one for me to answer, but I don't, I don't think I would want to say that anybody would de deliberately, or that, they've, that the building has been deliberately neglected, but we do know that it has some have suffered damage from vandalism and burglary. So um, those, uh, and, and the, the length of time that it has been left empty. So I think they would have all contributed to its poor state of repair now. Thank okay, you. I'll leave the other questions to other people. Thank you. Right, it's Chair. okay, yeah. Okay, Councillor Clarkson, if you can address your question, please. You need to... Great. Thank you, Councillor Clarkson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Roger's already asked uh, my question, so there's no need to ask another question. Thank you. That's very succinct of you. Thank you. Councillor Sangal. <laughs> Thank, thank you. I'm going to pursue Councillor Davidson's question. I mean, this 50,000 a year or, or near off, and only been one off from 45,000. I mean, it, it does feel very strange. And it, and it, and it, you know, when you read the report from page 40, 41, it, it, you know, there's more questions than answers. I mean, I mean, the Bull's Head and Ranmore Inn at 20 and 36, they're also sites that are relatively compact. Um, Free Mary, Mary Lads, you know, there's a significantly more parking space, more outdoor drink, eating and drinking space. And so, so I can see why the Free Merry Lads could, could attract this price and, 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 and not, not the plough. I mean, I think the question is, other than this one offer, what evidence have we got that it was actively marketed and they actively looked at other bids? So if people said, well, we're willing to pay 40,000 a year, would, would the applicant have, 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 have looked at that? And the report is, feels very thin. So could the officer give us some more evidence other than that one, one bid at 45,000? Before you answer that, Dinah, could I just um, have a little bit of clarification? We need to make sure that this line of questioning is a planning consideration that we can take today. I mean, as valid as I think your point is, Councillor Sanger, I just want to make sure that this line of questioning is something that you know is something that we could consider in the planning. We may have to go to Patricia for that as well. Could you just clarify that, please? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, I, I think that I, I understand uh, the line of questioning, but it, in itself, it's not determinative. The the listing of a registered uh, or registering of a, um, a, an asset of community value simply gives the community an opportunity to bid for and try and buy it, but there's nothing in the Act which requires the owner to sell it, even if their bid is far, outweigh, mm -hmm. far outweighs any other bid. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for that process to take place. Um, the planning position, so demolition, for instance, of that building that's listed, doesn't trigger that moratorium <coughs> um, because that's a planning matter. Um, so when, when it's listed, uh, initially that's to give that the community an opportunity but um the details of i think they've come to come to a point in any event because it's been empty and there's been because of the history of since its first listing i think it starts to have less and less weight anyway in the planning in planning terms so it's it's relevant in the listing and how the council dealt with that in its initial stages but the, what's before committee today is a decision on the land use with plan and planning considerations. So in terms of weight, the listing of such a, an asset for the community does carry planning considerations. So it can carry weight in the decision-making process. Okay. 
the things like the fifty thousand pound rental one element of that can act to give greater or lesser weight and so it'd be for members to decide to what extent that that in in light of the evidence had any weight at all in the overall planning balance thank you i wasn't wanting to stifle debate i was just wanting to make sure that we were keeping it on to what we can consider today councillor sang are you fully answered on that do you know well, I'm, I'm, i would like the planning officer to give an answer yeah okay that's fine yeah absolutely with the pubs that you refer to councillor sanger um that that, that have um rental values in significantly less than uh fifty thousand pounds that was uh, in the region of fifty thousand pounds that was um the mark the property was marketed for are tied to breweries uh, and they um uh, often attract quite significantly less in terms of rental because the the landlords uh, don't have the same freedom in terms of the range and and uh, prices of, of the goods, the drinks, and the food that they they sell. Um, and um, the the Three Mary Lads wasn't the only pub in the in the nearby vicinity that was the only one with a, a free house with a, a similar rental. So um, there are all manner of rental values. All pubs are different. They're all different sizes. They all have different you know in different locations. They all have. Uh, different specifications but the general rule of free house with accommodation in this case with three bedroomed accommodation uh, that the independent assessors and ourselves considered that the, the, in the region of £50,000 to be reasonable uh, and as far as we know there was one bid um, in the region of £50,000 it was £45,000 and for a number of reasons that fell through. Th thanks, Chair. Oh, okay. the, the, the point the point that hasn't been addressed is the is the issue of how how actively was it marketed. I mean, only one one bid does feel feel quite strange, and and, and the community has certainly I, I've been asking questions about you know how much was it advertised? How, how much did the did, did did the owners look look to find somebody to to, to take the pub on? I mean, the report on page 40, the officer report, um, explains... Page what? Sorry, Diana, could you just repeat that? Page what? The officer report, page 40. Yeah. Um, okay. In some of the, the, the uh, um, activities that the, um, the uh, property, the Crossweight Commercial, who were uh, taken on board to market the premises, uh, undertook, including... Um, circulating details to prospective occupiers. It was on websites um, and, uh, well, a number of various internet-based property websites. Um, the Right Move commercial property link, which I think is the is sort of go-to uh, possible um, uh, site um, and uh, local agents. So uh, it's hard to see how much more could have been done. Okay, th thanks Chair. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Councillor McCann. Thank you Chair. Uh, just a couple more mundane questions. Um, the bin storage area, as indicated on the plan, have Veolia been consulted as to how their vehicles can access and egress from that uh, site? Uh, thank you Chair. The uh, Veolia uh, lorry wouldn't access the site. The residents would take their bins to the collection area and then uh, the, the earlier operatives would come and get the bins as they would from um, uh, mm. you know, the houses along the same street. So there would be no requirement for a, a lorry to enter the site. Okay, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how that will work in practice, knowing, knowing my colleagues I worked with in the bins, but uh, there you go. Uh, the other thing is on the, on the roof line, how does it compare with the uh, no surrounding area? You might need to. I'll just try and share the screen again for you. Just bear with me. So, if I go to some of the latest slides. So, you can see that. To the east of the site, we have uh, two to three storey apartments. Um, and um, the feeling was that the 
that the, the scale of the development is not dissimilar um, to that um, and you know, sit quite comfortably next to those properties. To the west, we have a much lower level um, sort of stone building, which is in office use, which is why um, the development at this western end actually um, is, is lower um, because we felt that a transition was required uh, in order to um, you know, sit more comfortably next to that building. So if we look at the, um, the elevations, you can see it, it falls with the topography uh, and then drops down um, to, to the lower level of, of development to the west. Um, we, we consider it to sit, sit quite comfortably um, against the uh, adjoining buildings, particularly given that there's a large open space on the opposite side of uh, the road. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, the next person on my list is Councillor Chaplin. Councillor Chaplin. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my, my question is about the, the density um, of housing on, that's been proposed for this site. Um, 65.8 dwellings per hectare, um, which is out of character with the surrounding area, which has a, an average ranging from 30 to 50 dwellings per hectare. Um, that <coughs> so to turn that into a question, <laughs> um, would that be a material consideration um, for us as in coming to a decision on this? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The, the, the 30 to 50 reference isn't the isn't a, um, the density of the local area. It's um, a um, a value that's considered to be, uh, or uh, a density that's considered to be um, appropriate to promote um, in areas uh, such as this. Um, and that is, uh, yeah, 30 to 50 dwellings per hectare is appropriate in parts of the urban area that are not near high frequency bus routes. It's actually higher in areas with high frequency bus routes. This doesn't have a high frequency bus route, but it does have, a, it is on a, a major bus route, the number 51, which takes uh, a regular bus route, which, which would uh, takes people um, in, down to Crosspool, Broomhill and, and, and on to the city centre. Um, and, it's, and it's guidance, it's guidance only. Um, we look at the individual characteristics of the site, um, we look at, uh, you know, and the setting. Um, so this isn't, uh, 30 to 50 is guidance. Uh, in, in some urban areas, it can go higher in others. It was arguable whether we, we should have been aiming for the higher density anyway, given that it is on a, on a, um, a bus route. And um, I think we felt that in terms of character of the area, bringing the, the, the built form forward to address the street, you've got the large open space beyond, um, we've got good sized uh, houses or with adequate living accommodation and parking uh, areas um, that we felt that the slightly higher density was acceptable in this instance. Thank you. Councillor Chaplin, have you got a supplementary? Um, just to say that Councillor Dams is stealing the show at present. I was going to say, he's looking best. He's looking the best he's ever looked, isn't he? <laughs> I've explained, I've yes, explained the, to the, the dog chair, he must keep his paw down. Yeah, when he I know, you distracted me for 30 seconds nearly then. Right, Councillor Chaplin, <laughs> your supplementary. <laughs> Well, I, I come back to the material. Would this be, can the density of housing in this area be taken as a, a material consideration in, in coming to a decision on this? Thank you. The, uh, I said, well, I, I mean, it can be in that, um, the character of the area, well, or the, 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 how this development sits in, in the context of the existing character of the area um, is, a, is, a, is a planning consideration. But as I said, the 30 to 50 dwellings per hectare is guidance um, in, in core strategy policy CS26 um, for, for parts of the urban area that are not near high frequency bus routes. Um, this, this is a very accessible site um, and uh, uh, a site uh, on a main road frontage um, with a large open area in front of it 
and, and we felt that the density in this case was considered to be acceptable. Thank you. Are you okay, Councillor Chaplin, to move on? I've got Councillor Diane Hurst next. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes. It, it's a strange question, but it's what happens next? We have an application in front of us um, on a site that was um, a public house and has been decided to be an asset of community value. Can we, we just pause for a second, Councillor Hurst? We've lost Councillor Chaplin and he's gone off camera and we need to make sure that he's heard everything in order for him to vote. Do you yeah. mind? It's just because... That's, that's OK. Yeah, pause, yeah. Uh, Councillor Chaplin, your camera's disappeared. Have you lost signal? I'll just explain to members of the public and press that if a member can't hear all the evidence, they may not be able to make an informed decision. So part of virtual is that we need to make sure that all members can hear every single bit of the evidence, which is why I've paused it. I apologise for the inconvenience, by the way. Hmm. Councillor Chaplin. It looks like Councillor Chaplin's lost. Um, has he dropped out, Paul, of the meeting? No, it's still showing. Yeah, it's still showing you there. You, you've got a couple of options. You, you can adjourn for a short while to give us a chance just to try and get him back on. Or well, I would like to get him back on since we've unfortunately had apologies. Um, I would I would rather if the if the if we're all in agreement. Shall we, can we just adjourn for, thank you, Councillor Garber. Yeah, thank you. I think what we'll do, we'll, oh, Councillor Chaplin's back. Okay, we can go ahead. Thank you, Councillor Hurst. Start again for me, okay. please. Yeah, right. Um, we have an application in front of us for consideration. Um, it's on the site of a former pub, which was declared an asset of community value. Um, the community tried to raise the money to buy this site and failed. And it was purchased by developers and this scheme brought to, brought to us today for a decision. So what happens now? Because I'm, I'm sympathetic with the community point of view um, that they want to maintain this as an asset for something that they can use. I'm also mindful that there are an awful lot of pubs that are closed at the moment and struggling. Um, and we've heard that most of the letters have come from people on St. Francis Close who are suffering from the nuisance of an, uh, of an abandoned building and that for the owners, the uh, structural effects of, of the vandalism um, to the building have, have meant that repairs cost some more and more. So what happens now? If we say, no, actually, we still want this to be open to the community, we think this is still important, it still needs to be a community site. What does that do to the asset of community value? Does it reset the button? Does it give the, the, chance, the community a chance to... to... I, I know that in the, the village where my son lives, there is a, um, a community asset that is owned and operated by the community as a pub. Fine, they were successful, they're running it. Does it reset the button to allow this community to do the same, or is it just a failed application? Um, what happens next is, is my question. Thank you. Is, thank is that you okay, Diana? As well. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, the, the pub would stay on the ACV register for five years, and that's from the time it was registered. So it um, would stay on the register for another two and a half years, potentially could sit there for another two and a half years if if the applicant decides not to sell to somebody else or decides just you know to to, to wait uh at which time it comes off the register um and i you know potentially uh, another application could be submitted um in in which case the acv listing would not be a uh, material planning consideration um there is no requirement there the, there's no requirement to go back to the community and offer them uh, it, the, uh, a refusal wouldn't trigger another moratorium for the community to make another um, bid. Um, 
so it, 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 it's, a, it, it's a slightly awkward piece of legislation, the Localism Act, in, in that it, it allows the moratorium, they can raise the money, but there's no requirement for the, for the owner to sell um, to, you know, to anyone other than the people they want to sell to, which is usually the highest bidder. Um, so it, it, it could stay as it is for, for the next few years. Um, it could be sold. It's very hard to say, but it doesn't trigger uh, another opportunity for the community to buy it. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, anybody else got any more questions? Oh, Patricia, did you indicate you wanted to come in before I take any more questions? Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> On, on that, if, through you, Chair. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I, Diana, Diana's absolutely right, and I agree with everything she said, but um, there's also the other prospect is that the um, the applicant will appeal because um, on the basis that more weight than the evidence suggested, perhaps, um, was given in the decision. So if it was refused and greater weight was given, to the material consideration of its listing, it then went to appeal and an inspector then, as a decision maker, gave it less weight, um, then that would be pr the probable outcome of that, that uh, the decision today, it would be appealed. Because it's a matter of weight for the decision maker, and so if it goes to appeal, the decision maker will really look at, uh, in the planning balance, how much weight should the listing of that property in light of the evidence over the last five years um, be given in the planning balance. I, th I thought that might help members to decide. Thank you. Any more questions from anybody? I don't have any more questions. Anybody else? Councillor, De uh, did you did you indicate Councillor Garbert then? No, that's okay. Councillor Davidson, you want to come back? Yeah. Thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, it's just on that um, that last point. I think Diane um, did raise a very important uh, question here. Uh, if it were turned down today, for example, what would then happen to the uh, to the premises? Would that be up to the uh, the people that, that own the premises, or, or and could they just uh, leave it as it is? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I mean there would be that they. You know, I don't, I don't want to put words into anybody's mouth, um, but um, the pub would only stay on the ACV register, as I said, for five years. Um, and so it may be uh, a case of waiting, waiting it out. It may be a case that it might be sold, but there's certainly no... Um, uh, the likelihood of it coming back into community use, I don't think there's any greater um, necessarily by, by the application being... Um, uh, not being supported today. Thank you. Do we have any more questions from any members? No. Do we have any comments from any members? Councillor Clarkson, you have a comment. Lovely. You can go ahead. You're the only one I have so far. Thank you, Chair. Councillor <laughs> Sangal, yeah. It, mm. Thank you, Chair. It's always sad when uh, a pub uh, cannot bring itself round really uh, when a pub chain like Enterprise sells it they've obviously done their own work it wasn't working for them so they put it up for sale and uh, a local community group although it was a community asset they tried and, and that failed uh, <clears throat> and it's become it's become dilapidated and um, we've heard that the neighbours are not very happy and I'm not surprised if you've got dumping, break-ins and et cetera. Uh, and, uh, you know, although it is a, a lovely looking building, it has become dilapidated. The plans I've seen for the other buildings, I, I, I quite like them. I think they're smart, good quality and uh, the stone finish. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go for this one, Chair. That's all I wanted okay. to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I have Councillor Sangar for comments next. Th th thank you. Thank you, Chair. I mean, as, as Councillor Clark says, clearly this is a difficult one. Um, I disagree with him and I will be a 
opposing the uh, uh, the officer's recommendation. Um, it is an asset of community value. The community need cross board made every effort. Um, that they, they've got it listed. They've had hundreds of people support. They've raised tens of thousands of pounds. Um, I just think it's a real problem with the legislation in terms of how we support the community. And I don't think the council has done enough to support the local community. I think it's still registered until April 2023. And therefore I think we should uh, reject the application today and give the community another chance to get, get the plow back, in, back into community use. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor McCann, comment, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, again, it's a difficult one, this, because no matter what, the, the, the plough has been a landmark uh, building up there for a long, long time. I uh, know it well, being in the pub, it was a very good, good public back in his day. But like Clark, Councillor Clarkson says, pubs now struggle. As I've, I've run a pub myself, same as Councillor Clarkson, it's very difficult when things are good. At this present time, things are very, very bad. And unfortunately, I don't see a future for this particular pub. I wish I could. Uh, so I'm afraid, reluctantly, I will be voting in favour of this. Thank you. Do I have any more comments from any members? Councillor Dams. Can't hear you, Councillor Dams. <laughs> Right, is that all right? Yeah. Um, much as um, Bob's just said, to be absolutely honest, um, I wish I could see a future for this pub, but unfortunately I can't. Uh, I can't see anything changing and uh, I can only see the pub getting worse and worse and becoming a bit of a public nuisance if, if it's not dealt with. And again, reluctantly, um, I will be supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you. I have Councillor Hurst. That would like to make a comment. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, it is a difficult decision. Um, and as much as I would like to support the community, because I'm, if, if, if they managed to put a successful bid in, they would have had a, a, a community spirit and a community well around them. Um, I feel for the people that are living near this derelict building. Um, and for that reason, I feel I, I just have to go with the um, planning application and, and support the officer recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments from any members? Councillor Davidson and Councillor Chaplin. Councillor Davidson first. Thank you very much. Uh, it is. Uh, it's heart rendering, isn't it? It's a very difficult one, uh, particularly for people that live uh, nearby. I, 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 I'm falling off on, uh, on one side of the fence to say, look, give them uh, uh, another opportunity because I don't think that the the um, the, uh, the people that uh, ran the the um, uh, should I say that were trying to sell the the asset in the first place gave uh, the community a fair chance, but we'll have to see if the present owners would um, would be willing to. Um, uh, come to some agreement with the um, uh, with the community. So I'm 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 going to see I'm going to test the waters there. So I'm going to reject it. Thank you, Councillor Chaplin. Yeah, I think as others have said, this this is a a, a difficult decision, um, not least because um, the uh, <coughs> the building um, has has acquired a lot of um, historical and uh, prestige around sport, both for, for cricket and football. Um, there are one or two myths in the, there, which I think we've got to be careful of, um, particularly to do with where the, um, <coughs> the rules for football were, were drawn up, and not least because um, if you actually look at the history of football, it's gone through no end of revisions. Uh, the most recent in 1995, um, and other revisions since, um, but I, while, while I like the stonework of the of the proposal um, for the, for the um, that the applicants brought forward, it does seem to me that it is cramming quite a lot of buildings onto that site, and I do think that eight is um, 
<coughs> is making it um, a bit too too condensed um, for the people that will be will be living there. Um, and I, I would have liked to have seen a, a building which was a bit a bit more modest um, in its scale and massing. Um, and while I take in the take into account the other considerations that uh, people have brought, um, reluctantly I'm I'm going to uh, oppose this development on this occasion. Thank you. Any more comments from any members? Okay, we will go to the we're going to go to the vote. Okay. Okay, the first I'm going to do this by roll call. Give me just one second. Okay, Councillor Sangar. The proposal is to grant conditionally. Um, are you for or against? Yeah. Against. Okay. Councillor Dams. Sorry, Councillor Dams. Sorry. I thought I was on four. Four. Councillor Hurst. Four, Chair. Councillor McCann. Four, Chair. Councillor Chris Rosling Joseph. Four, Chair. Councillor Roger Davidson. Uh, against, Chair. Councillor Clarkson. Four, Chair. Councillor Garbutt. Against, Chair. Against. Councillor Chaplin. Against, Chair. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm struggling. I'm really, really struggling. And um, I'm going to vote against the application for the simple reason that um, it's the heritage. It's the heritage of the site. And the heritage being that it's part of the football history. And I think that's something that we need to keep the community and the heritage together. I'm well aware that we have got to come up with some reasons for refusal on this, but that is the reason why I'm struggling to support the officer's recommendation. Um, I've just, you know, the localism act, I feel lets down the community. And the one thing that I want to do is to help stand up for the community. And it's where all members have been struggling today. And that is where I want to go on this, is the fact that it doesn't have a lot of teeth. And I would like us to see if we can have the one last ditch attempt at doing that. As much as it might be a difficult one, I really want to go down that route. Thank you. So uh, we now have to come up for reasons for refusal. I'm just going to hand over to Patricia first and see where we go from here, Patricia. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, obviously everybody's given different weight um, and we've got a tie as well. We've got to think about that in a minute. Um, reasons for refusal are members' um, obligation. It's not for officers to, if it's gone against their recommendation, to, okay. to give those reasons. Um, the reasons that I've heard in the debate are uh, density. Um, and as you've just said, the uh, community issues. So that's giving weight to the listing. Um, and in doing so, if you choose those reasons, it's okay. based all reasons are based on evidence. And That's fine, then we'll, we'll work that out then. I just wanted to, before we went off, it's very complicated, this it one, is. with it being an asset of community value. So I just wanted to make sure before we started going down the route, we were going down the correct route. I need someone to put forward, Councillor Sangar, have you got put forward a proposal? Well, I mean, I've, I've heard what Patricia, Patricia said. I mean, I think, I mean, from, from my point of view, it's about, about the weight we're giving to it as an asset of community value. Um, and that it, it's, it's the value of, the, of, the, of the, the, the public house as a community asset. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, wary about, I'm wary about going down Mike, Mike Chaplin's line, not because I disagree with it, but because if we think that it's an asset of community value, it's the, it's the current building. It, I, I wasn't really taking an opinion on 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 whether it should be eight houses or six houses. I I I, I want I want the asset 
of of community value. I want to value community attempts to keep this building going. So yeah. I would rather rather focus on that. But I think that's a stronger because yeah. I, I noticed in the minutes, I noticed on page 19 when you took the decision back in 2017 that that was the reason you went for and to grant planning permission would therefore be contrary to paragraph 70 of the national planning policy framework which okay. seeks to guard against the unnecessary loss of value of services and services i just think that's a that's a yeah. stronger point than talking about the des the proposed design uh, yeah absolutely it's, yeah I, I mean i i agree with you on that anybody else got anything to add councillor garbert councillor clarkson Yes, Councillor Garbutt. Yes, I agree with, with Councillor Sanger. I think that's the uh, um, the only reason that I think that I would have wanted to oppose this, uh, and I did oppose. Um, so I think that must be the way to go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we're going to. So the proposal is. Do we have a seconder? Are you going to second that proposal, Councillor Sanger? Do you know? Yeah. I'm so, sorry, Councillor Garbutt, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy that we come up with some words? Uh, the rest of the committee? Okay, agree. Okay. Okay, so the application was refused. Chair. Yes, Chair. sorry. Yeah. Ch ju just mm -hmm. for absolute clarity, Chair, yeah. um, we've got 10 members of the committee, uh, five who voted for the application, five who voted against. Mm -hmm. um, just to confirm that you're exercising your right as chair to use your casting vote. Oh, yes. So sorry. I wasn't quite aware of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. OK, so um, the application is refused and we will come up with some words and um, that will be decided by myself and the co-chair. OK, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We'll now move on to the next item on the agenda. This is item 7B, application number 19 stroke 02085 stroke OUT. It's the site of the South Yorkshire Trading Standards, Thorncliffe Lane, Sheffield S353XX. And it's an outlying planning permission to grant conditionally. If I could hand over to, is it you, Dinah? I think it is, isn't it? Lovely, thank you. Thank you, Chair, just bear with me. Okay, so uh, the site for this application um, is uh, the former site of the South Yorkshire Trading Standards, um, found by Lane End, Thorncliffe Lane and Thorncliffe View. There's some photographs of the site um, taken from Lane End. The previous uh, buildings on the site have been demolished. This photograph uh, on the right is looking at uh, Thorncliffe Lane. Uh, this photograph on, on the right of this page is looking at the houses on the opposite side of Thorncliffe View. And this is the, the site uh, in its current state. Um, it does fall from east to west uh, with, a, there is, with a central plateau, um, such that the houses on Thorncliffe Lane are uh, higher than the site, on much of the site. This is a, a drawing showing um, a scheme of highway works. The proposal is for is an, is an outline application um, for uh, eight houses um, and uh, a, a small supermarket uh, with access to be taken from Lane End. And this, uh, um, and, and all matters are reserved apart from access. So this drawing just indicates the access or the highway proposals that are, are proposed to facilitate the access, which include a, a relocated bus stop, a new zebra crossing, um, a realigning of the, uh, the centre line, um, and as I said, uh, the new entrance in the centre of the site. This plot of land in the um, southwest corner doesn't form part of the application site. This shows the topography of the site in the fall. This shows the layout. So, the, as I said, the eight houses, detached houses, uh, onto Thorncliffe View, um, the retail food store in the centre of the site, um, and parking. 
uh, I think it's got 115 vehicles, but this is an indicative plan only. As I said, all matters apart from access would be reserved. This shows the single story supermarket in the centre of the site, the change in level across uh, the site, um, houses to the west on Thorncliffe Lane, houses to the east uh, on Thorncliffe View. These, this is the front elevation onto Thorncliffe View. And some more sections through the site and, um, and some aerial shots there. Uh, these are before looking at the site. This is Lane End uh, and this is Lane End with the new houses and uh, the um, illustrative uh, images of the proposed supermarkets. I'm going to uh, turn to the supplementary report now. Um, there has been uh, an additional submission, which was uh, another uh, highway drawing that simply showed the, the access proposals without the illustrative layout. Uh, so we've amended condition two to refer to that drawing. Um, we have received a represent representation from Miriam Cates MP, uh, and that related to a number of issues which cons constituents uh, have raised but feel hadn't been fully considered, uh, and I can go through those. Uh, they are that the site is a designated housing area and in the past has been granted outline planning permission for a purely residential development. While planning policies do allow a retail outlet to be built here, what consideration has been given to the possibility of a re residential only development? Uh, although a traffic survey has been conducted, a number of residents feel its findings are not in line with their own experiences. Will the council agree to commissioning a more substantial traffic survey in the area? What mitigation, mitigating action is the council proposing to ensure that if parking demand is higher than expected, it will not result in cars being parked on lane end, which could increase congestion um, or, or on residential side streets? Is there a possibility of restrictions being placed on delivery times to ensure that they do not coincide with peak hours or school drop off and pickup times? Could deliveries be routed through the Thorncliffe Business Park to access a site from Thorncliffe Lane? What action does the council propose to address the problems of three junctions? That's Thorncliffe Lane, Thorncliffe View and the new supermarket access being exceptionally close together. What guarantees have been received that the design for the homes will be in keeping with the local area? How does the council reconcile the development of a food store here when it is in contravention of national policy to focus retail development on existing high streets and local centres? And the lack of a plan, local plan, means that development in suburbs such as Chapel Town has no point, local point of reference and no democratic consent from the community. The use of brownfield sites and the promise of local jobs should be welcome, but the possibility of detrimental impact in the local area must also be considered. A representation has also been received from Ecclesfield Parish Councillor, Councillor uh, Terence Borden, um, relating to existing retail outlets, um, accidents and light impact. And he also questioned why the Sheffield plan of 2015 is not referred to as the site has been earmarked for residential development. Now, in response to those concerns raised, sorry, I'm taking you back to each of those. Um, consideration has been given to the possibility of a residential only development. Uh, however, whilst planning permission for such has previously been granted, um, as, as described in the officer report, those consents have not been implemented and no such scheme has subsequently come forward. The application is not a housing site specified under UDP policy H13, i.e. an allocated site where only housing and uh, other defined uses are acceptable. Other uses are acceptable. The local authority must determine the current application in accordance with the development plan unless material considerations indicate otherwise. The submitted transport assessment and the traffic surveys undertaken are considered to be sufficiently robust to provide an appropriate assessment of the current and predicted traffic flows. No further traffic surveys other than to establish the type of pedestrian crossing on lane end are considered necessary. The illustrative on-site parking levels are in line with the council's published parking standards. Uh, on this basis, it's unlikely there will be a persistent over demand for on-site parking in the future. The amount and frequency of delivery vehicles that would service the site is small in comparison with the amount of traffic on the road during, network, during peak hours and at school drop-off and pick-up times. And should delivery times coincide with peak hours for traffic in schools, it would not have a significant contribution to or impact on congestion and highway safety. Uh, access through the Thorncliffe Business 
park is outside of the control of the applicants. The distance between the proposed site access and the two junctions either side is considered to be acceptable. The design of the new homes will be assessed as part of a subsequent reserve matters application. As outlined in the officer report, the government's national planning policy for town, main town centre uses, including retail development, is that, is that they should be located in town centres, then edge of centres, and only if suitable sites are not available or expected to become available within a reasonable period, should out of centre sites be considered. This sequential test has been applied to this proposal and there are no sequentially preferable sites in the catchment area. Uh, and the previous emerging plan, which is known as city draft city policies and sites document, was not submitted to the government for public examination because the council took the decision in 2013 to produce an entirely new local plan. While work started on a new Sheffield plan in December 2013, it has been subject to delays and no waiting decision, and it has no waiting decision making at, at present, um, so it cannot be referred to. Um, consultation on a new issues and options document is expected to commence later this year. And finally, there are a couple of new and amended conditions. Uh, condition six and seven has been have been amended because the findings of a phase one um, risk assessment uh, are now agreed, um, and uh, a new condition is recommended to, to secure internal noise standards for the proposed dwellings uh, in a, a submitted noise report. Thank you. Thank you, Dinah. Right, we have two speakers and we have uh, one for and one against. If we could bring Mr. Keith Nutter in first, please. Is that right? Yeah, lovely. Mr. Nutter speaking uh, against, uh, it, no, it's against first. It's, sorry, it's my fault. I've got it wrong, haven't I? I've, no, it's against first, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah, it's my fault. I've written it down. <laughs> Still not recovered, yeah. Mr. Terry Borden first, if you don't mind, yeah, thank you. Yeah, got from the wrong way around on my piece of paper. I do apologize, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you could turn Mr. Nutter's camera off, please, because, yeah, that's brilliant, thank you. Lovely, nice to see you, Councillor Borden. If you'd like to go ahead, you've got five minutes. Thank you, good afternoon, thank councillors. You. Uh, I've been asked to speak on behalf of the local uh, residents. Um, I need to start by saying the residents are concerned that the local press have published stories in recent weeks stating that they've got confirmation this site has already been approved before today's meeting. The residents are very concerned that they were not notified of today's meeting, um, particularly so when they had not one but three outstanding freedom of information requests despite being outstanding for many months, were only fulfilled after sending in my statement yesterday, clearly giving the residents no time to read, digest or respond to uh, in time for today's meeting. They're also concerned that the deadlines that have come and gone with no communications, but the developers have been able to continually add documents to strengthen their case after those deadlines. Uh, and no documents were added to the planning portal to notify residents of the deadlines being extended. The planning officers make reference to the Sheffield local plan adopted in 2009 that highlighted this particular piece of land was for building of houses, which incidentally was given out outline planning permission for such. However, at that time, the plan showed the city was expected to decrease in size, but the 2013 strategic housing land assessment further identified this site for housing. The Sheffield plan of 2015, which was well publicized, but not registered with the government or adopted, shows the city is expected to grow significantly by 2034 and that we need two to three, two to 2,300 homes a year. So this contentious piece of land uh, was still earmarked for houses. The derisory eight houses on the plan that were supposed to be in keeping with the properties, um, but they're not. The properties next to the site are large detached properties with detached garages, etc. The planning officer stated in one of his reports he disapproved quite strongly of this development and mentioned many of the same points that we're raising today, including the building of this store would affect local residents, and it was against H10 plan. The noise, pollution, congestion, loss of potential housing stock are all of concern. If built, this store would set 
uh, would be set nowhere near any other shop of any kind, contrary, contrary to 1998 UDP proposals and the National Policy Plan framework. This area is already overflowing with medium to large stores. We have Nissa, Sainsbury's, two co-ops, the soon to open Herons that was passed last year on Greengate Lane, Asda, Aldi and Morrison's, all used by the residents of this area. Including the smaller stores, there are already 14 stores. However, we have just three GPs two, and two dentists, but surprisingly, so many food stores. The fragility of the, of the economy as it is should not be underestimated. The opening of yet another supermarket in an area already flooded with food stores could be disastrous for the number of, uh, uh, for a number of them and should be considered as per the National Policy Plan framework. We need to call into question the reports already provided by Ackroyd and Abbott. The road report suggests the road would suffer no significant increase in traffic or accidents uh, would not increase. However, this proposed store is on a dangerous junction and opposite, there is an even worse one with a blind junction off Warrell Road. Contrary to the report, the parish council and residents have experienced many more accidents than recorded, primarily because the police or council do not come to clear up. Six walls have been knocked down recently, including a house that was affected, none of which uh, show on any reports. Despite residents asking for an independent road vol volume and speed check to be done, as stated in the planning officer's summary, this has not happened. The developers have led us to believe local residents will walk to new store. However, we all know people use their cars to do their weekly shopping. This would cause a large increase in, tra in traffic on the roads leading to the proposed store. Furthermore, the roads that the lorries would need to use have four primary schools along them. They were not built for heavy vehicles and some of them have uh, road restrictions at, at 20 miles an hour. But by allowing this, traf this store, traffic would significantly increase the risk of harm or even life, uh, and that should not be underestimated. To sum up, I would ask the council reject this planning application, as the parish council did, because the reports are not comprehensive and have been called into question. The city has earmarked this site for the very much needed housing, and the eight proposed houses are not in keeping with the area. The store would be overdeveloped, and given there are already 14 stores in the area, another surely cannot be justified. The Freedom of Information request Five we minutes. received at 5.45 last night, and we asked that the council, if they are minded to approve this proposal, then they reserve judgment until such a time as that the residents are able to consider the content of, the, the, of those requests and make full and proper representation. Thank you. And the requested road reports be carried out. Thank you very much. With, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, if you could um, remove Councillor Borden from the meeting now, please. Thank you. Mr Nutter, thank you. Sorry about the confusion. <laughs> thank okay. you. You've got five minutes to speak. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I'm speaking today on behalf of the applicant and the developer who will be working in partnership with Lidl to deliver a high quality but sensitive development. Back in April 2019, we engaged with the local community to understand their views. Whilst plans were presented to the public, further amendments were made following that consultation event. It is evident that some of the concerns highlighted would occur with any development on the site, whether it be residential, retail, or any other use. Furthermore, it would appear there are a significant number of objectors to this application who do not want another supermarket in the area. Whilst I accept that some people will choose to shop elsewhere and may not like Lidl as a brand, this is not a planning matter and is no concern of this committee. Lidl are an international supermarket operator who have won numerous awards in the UK for their quality of produce and value for money. There are a significant number of people out there who like the brand and its offer, and this will be no different in Chapel Town. The reference made to 14 supermarkets already in the area is clearly misleading. The majority of these are simply local convenience stores which do not offer the range of goods that people expect to find in a modern supermarket such as the existing Asda in Chapel Town or the Aldi in Ecclesfield. I understand that people believe that if a new store is to come to Chapel Town, then it should be located in the centre. Whilst this is the view it is consistent with the sequential approach, it is common ground that there are simply no sites that are suitable or available. 
This is further confirmed by the fact that Lidl has been searching for a site in Chapel Town for over 10 years without success. Having said that, the application site is highly sustainable and there will be a significant opportunity for local residents to access the store on foot. Other objections relate to matters of detail which can only be addressed at the reserve matter stage. Whilst we have demonstrated that a little store can fit on the site, we still have the opportunity to alter the development when looking at the final layout in more detail. At that stage, we would again be carefully examining the concerns raised by neighbouring properties and would be keen to work with those residents and council officers to ensure that the final design is sensitively planned and minimises any impact that might arise. It is not in Lidl's interest to develop a store that will be constantly viewed as a bad neighbour. Where stores have been introduced to residential areas, the company and the store manager work hard to develop a relationship with local residents and seek to address any concerns as promptly as possible. Concerns have also been raised, as we've heard, about highways and the speed and volume of traffic on Lane End. Our surveys and analysis don't support these concerns, and the Council's Highway Officer agrees with our conclusions. However, we have offered to incorporate a pedestrian crossing, which would be a major benefit to the safety of pedestrians using Lane End, as well as acting to slow passing traffic. Whilst objections have been raised about it because it's shown as a zebra crossing, it must be noted that further speed surveys will be undertaken before the final type of crossing is chosen. Again, this is another point of detail that will be thoroughly explored at the next stage. Just to reiterate, the application before you today is about approving the principle of the development on the site, with a reserve matters application to follow. Having said that, we have already committed significant time and resources to exploring key issues to ensure that the development can be accommodated without any adverse impact on living conditions of existing residents. This is something that your officer clearly agrees with. Furthermore, the development will create a significant number of new local construction jobs, as well as job opportunities within the store at a time when England is about to head into its worst recessionary period for over half a century. For these reasons, I would urge the committee to support the planning officer's recommendation and allow more Bain and Lidl to move to the next stage of this development, whereby we can explore the design in detail and where necessary, utilize best practice to help address any concerns that have been highlighted today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. If we, if Mr Nutter could leave the meeting, thank you very much. Right, if I could ask Dinah and possibly Helen to respond to the comments made, that would be great. Dinah, do you want to go first? I don't think I have anything add to add to the, to the officer report, Chair. Okay, Helen. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I think I would just like to stress that um, we are confident that the transport assessment that has been carried out is a robust assessment. Um, the, in terms of the access to the site, um, we are again confident that a safe access can be provided for the type of development that we're looking at. Um, the site lines from, for the access Access, meet the requirements of the manuals for streets and are also backed up by the speed surveys that have been carried out. Um, in turn, I think a comment was made about uh, accidents and, and the residents feeling that there were more accidents than we have recorded. The accidents that we look at and that will be looked at in part of the transport assessment are the recorded personal injury, excuse me, injury accidents um, which are held by the police. Um, there have been two in the past five years, um, neither of which have indicated any particular problem with the highway network. And in actual fact, two accidents in that location would not be considered as of any sort of black accident black spot. Um, and we certainly don't think that there's going to be any increase in the likelihood of accidents as a result of this development. Um, again, I think mention was made about service vehicles using the Thorncliffe Business Park. I think, as, as Diana said, that's not something that um, we can look at because that is basically not part of the adopted highway. Um, I think that was about it. And thank you, Chair. Lovely. Thank you very much. I'll now open for questions from members. If you have a question, 
could you indicate? Anybody? Councillor McCann and Councillor Sangar. So Councillor McCann first, Councillor Sangar, then Councillor Chaplin. Thank you. Councillor McCann. You're muted, Councillor McCann. Go ahead, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very wary about outline planning permission because what what is in outline does not necessarily end up what we end building. And I have previous experience of large uh, supermarket chains proposing one thing and then delivering something completely different. Uh, can somebody explain why is it put forward as a pl outline planning and not as a full planning application? Thank you. Dinah. <laughs> uh, they're fully within their rights to submit uh, uh, either a full or an outline planning application. They may want to secure the principle uh, first um, before they proceed to uh, designing uh, or developing their design in more detail. Uh, yeah, well, the thing is, we've got a sort of token eight houses on this site. So, what happens if they decide they need more space and the eight houses disappear on the full application? How, how do we deal with that? Then that wouldn't be within the, that wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to do that under the current consent. This application is out on application for eight houses and a supermarket. If they wanted to build two houses, that, then that wouldn't, they would need a new planning permission. Yeah, but that's, that's my point. Surely that come under a full application as opposed to an outline application. Not sure I quite understand the questioning. If they wanted to apply for something different to eight houses and a supermarket, they wouldn't be able to do it under this consent. So that the reserve matters, uh, the reserve matters uh, have still to be de dealt with, but that's only um, uh, layout, uh, landscaping, um, bear with me, scale, uh, appearance. So the detailed design and layout of the site would have has to be has to be agreed, but the consent is for would be for eight houses and a supermarket. Mm. Right. So Councillor McCann, I think what Diana's saying is that the fine detail of that, you know, would be decided at the next stage. But yeah. I, on the back of your question, going to take chair's privilege. One of the speaker, um, Mr. Nutter, said the final design could be smaller. Would that mean there could be a possibility of more housing then? Because, you know, we can't do less housing, but could we do more housing if um, the design was smaller? Do you know? So, so. Yeah. I return to that, Chair. Mm, yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, we can't uh, change the description of the development. Um, if they're applying for the erection of eight houses and... Uh, 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 an A1, a retail food store, then that's what we would um, expect okay. to come forward at reserve matters yeah. stage. Right, okay. I'm very sceptical, Chair. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sangar. <laughs> uh, th th thank you, Chair. I mean, I mean do, do we understand why the, why the scheme for 24 houses that Planning Committee agreed in 2008? why that fell apart and I suppose a, a second question is just to go back to this sequential test I mean what other large sites are there in the Chapel Town area for supermarkets that were looked at? Um, I forgot the first part of your question there I'm sorry Councillor. So the first part, part, <laughs> part is do we know do we know why the 24 houses agreed in 2008 didn't happen? Yeah well well, the two previous consents for housing um, uh, no we don't we don't know why they didn't come forward um, and in terms of the sequential test there were no uh, uh, sequentially preferable sites of the right size um, between this here and Chapel Town um, so there, there were no sites that could accommodate um, this proposal. So, so can I be clear, where, where are the nearest Lidl's that we're talking about then? Because obviously Lidl feel they've got a, um, a commercial need and that there's a market, a potential market between their other sites. So where, where are the other Lidl's? Um, I'm sorry, I don't actually have that information available. I know the nearest, um, the nearest uh, discount food store is, is our chair, council, in Ecclesfield. Yeah, because because I mean the report talks a lot about the potential impact on, on ASDA, and I mean I think you know at the end of the day as a planning committee we're interested in there being competition. It's just about is this the only site for a supermarket? 
the, 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 the nearest supermarkets in, in Ecclesfield are, uh, sorry, are, are Asda, of uh, uh, similar you know, size, are the Asda in Chapel Town and um, the Aldi on the Common at Ecclesfield. Um, both, uh, and, but other, uh, but other um, supermarkets were taken into account in the, in the impact test. Um, the impact test was carried out because it's required as a as, a, as under policy S five of the of the development plan. It's not a requirement of the MPPF um, in this instance because of the 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 the, it, the size of the supermarket doesn't trigger isn't over the two two and a half thousand square meter threshold um, for impact tests. We we carried out the impact test because it's required under. We wanted to fully explore. And give some weight to policy S5, but S5 holds less weight than the MPPF. So um, while we the, the impact test concluded that the impact on the nearest supermarkets wouldn't be substantial um, and that they would still operate um, at a, a above uh, at a reasonable um, uh, turnover, um, then that um, it wasn't a necessary, it isn't necessary in accordance with the MPPF. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Chaplin, you have a question. I do have a question, but I may be able to help uh, Councillor Sanger. Um, there is a, a little on Halifax Road um, in Southie Ward. Um, there, as Jack Clarkson will probably confirm, there is also one um, between Deep Car and Stocksbridge. Um, both are to the west of this area. Um, I would also comment that there is a Morrison's not far from the Aldi and Ecclesfield and that this area that we're, where we're looking at now is in the East Ecclesfield ward. Um, so I have a first question to officers in that how, is, how far is the Aldi at um, East Ecclesfield and how, from, from, the, from the application site and how far is the one at Birdwell? because you could argue that they're both fairly in fairly close proximity for residents in that area. The sites that are looked at will be within um, a defined um, uh, within defined parameters. So the impact test will have only taken into account um, uh, stores within those within that um, catchment within the catchment area. Uh, of this site. So stores that may be close, but just outside the catchment area won't have been taken into account. I'm afraid I don't know the exact um, distances of those stores involved, um, but um, but those that have, I mean, and I, I'll just try and do a little bit of digging, I think, um, what, you know, uh, while um, where the, the debate continues, um, but, um, but as far as I understand, all the uh, significant incent, uh, sorry, all the um, stores that needed to be taken into account within the catchment area were uh, the key ones being the Asda in Chapel Town and the Aldi at the Common in Ecclesfield. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions from any members? Councillor Garbutt. Thank you, Chair. I've got two questions. Um, there seems to be a, a, a big discrepancy between the experience of the people on the ground in terms of the traffic uh, and the results of the highways uh, investigation into it. Um, I'm quite concerned about this. Um, um, the residents are asking for an independent road check on this. Would it be possible to uh, ask for an independent road check uh, before going ahead with this? That was my first question. Do you want to say them both and then we can take them? Yeah. Sure. Oh, the second yeah. one. Um, uh, we've been told there are 14 other food stores within the local area. Um, and Mr Nutter suggested that uh, most of those were smaller shops. Um, I would have thought it was the smaller shops that would have had uh, the greater impact, uh, on, on which it would have the greater impact. Uh, and therefore, we need to look at the impact on those small shops as well. Um, uh, you know, they are much more likely to be shops that would be um, um, more greatly hurt because purely because of their uh, smaller turnover in the first place. 
uh, and a, you know, a, a, a small impact on their turnover might be, uh, um, you know, the last the last straw for them. Um, so, are we are we taking that into account? Is that something that we, uh, or do we just uh, compare the shops of, of um, similar size to to the one that's being proposed? Thank you, Diana. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, we, the, 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 the impact tech, uh, test takes into, takes into account the stores in the catchment area, which are those in, um, which include the Asda and um, in Chapel Town and the Aldi uh, Ecclesfield. Um, consumer or retail demand, um, i.e. the need for new shops, um, it, that's not an issue that we take into account in planning decisions. Um, and uh, the, the local um, centre is has uh, very low um, uh, vacancy rates. It's it's um, uh, it, it, it it's uh, functioning um, uh, well. Uh, it has a, a good turnover, and that's where the uh, the impact is assessed on the local centre. It doesn't necessarily look at individual shops that are out of local centre. Well, it doesn't look at it. It looks specifically. Um, at the local centre and shops within that. So that's why we are, um, we, we, we specifically, the test specifically looks at those units there and looks at the impact of this proposal on the shops in the local centre. Thank you. Councillor Garbutt, have you got a supplementary? Um, no, but I'd like my um, first question yeah. answered. About yeah, H not. Helen's just indicated she was in. I was bringing her in. Don't worry. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there will be no requirement for us to do any extra surveys um, before this application was was considered. Um, the traffic counts were undertaken on a neutral month. Um, on, and on a neutral day, so there's no reason that they weren't taken in, in any holiday times or anything like that. Um, uh, in terms of the speed surveys, I mean, I think, as, as you've said, there will be some more speed surveys done when we are actually looking at the detail of the pedestrian crossing. Um, but again, they were done in accordance with um, all the guidance that you would do, that you have for speed service in terms of the number of um, records taken, recording the the road conditions and one thing or another. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I think the information that has been submitted is the information that we would expect to be submitted. We feel um, that, it, that it is uh, an acceptable level of information. There's nothing that stands out that we don't particularly agree with. Um, and so I, I wouldn't see any reason, reason to do any further surveys prior to a decision being made, Chair. Councillor Garbutt. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Chaplin, did you want to come back, Councillor Garbutt? No, thanks. No. That's OK. I'm just, yeah. Councillor Chaplin, you raised, indicated you had another question. Yes, it, 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 I suppose it leads on from the sequential tests um, that need to be applied and would seem to overrule um, S5, <clears throat> the S5 principle that we keep commercial development within existing commercial areas or on the edge of commercial areas. Um, I mean, the one I know locally in, in Southie Green, um, the little there has recently expanded about three years, two years ago, um, but it was on the edge of an existing uh, commercial area. Um, and we're being asked to look at putting one in what up till now has been um, a primarily a residential area. Um, and a reference is made on, on, I think it's page 81, uh, to something about case law, um, which would give the developer the, um, the upper hand, so to speak. I uh, uh, just wondered if off officers can expand on, on what that case law relates to and what the context would be um, and where it could be applied um, were this committee not to grant planning permission today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who would be, who's able to answer that, Dinah? So, sorry, uh, Councillor Chapman, could you just tell me where on, on page 81 the reference to the case law is? Which paragraph? I've just got it open there. Oh, is it on the end of page 80? 
Sorry, it might, yes, it might, might yeah. be. Um, policy S5 um, requires an assessment uh, of, of impact. Um, and uh, the MPPF doesn't in this case because the size of the supermarket doesn't trick, isn't above the two and a half thousand square meter threshold. But this uh, case, High Court case, Aldergate versus Mansfield, um, that makes it clear that even, even, out, even though policy S5 is out of date in that respect, we still have to um, assess whether the proposal um, accords with it as a starting point because that's the starting point of all decision making, the local development plan. So that's why we then went on to do an impact test um, to ascertain whether, uh, you know, how much weight we give it then has to be debated because, because of the, 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 the less weight we can give to that part of policy S5, uh, but we had to carry out the impact test to, um, to go through all the necessary stages before coming to a, a conclusion. Um, so, so while we, so the, the point being that while we, um, uh, while S5 carries less weight in, 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 in relation to the MPPF, S5 seems to place an embargo on out of centre development, the MPPF doesn't, policy uh, S5 um, requires an impact test, the MPPF doesn't, but because decisions have got to be made in accordance with the development plan, we then carried out the test, but we have to give the results of that test less weight. Um, so it's, that's, it's complicated, but I hope that's clear. Thank you. Any more questions? No, any, are we happy to go to comments? Any comments? Councillor Sanger, Councillor Clarkson, Councillor McCann, Councillor Sanger. Uh, th thank you, Chair. I mean, I shall be supporting the officer's recommendation on, on this one. Um, it's a brownfield site. Uh, it needs to be developed. Uh, it's frustrating that we've not been able to a uh, scheme for all housing hasn't come forward, but it's not come forward. Um, I support competition between supermarkets and um, I, you know, although I'd rather shops were built in, in, in centres, I accept there isn't a, a suitable site uh, closer in, in Chapel Town and, and I accept that the, the, other, the other littles are far away and, you know, a bit of competition between, between, between uh, Lidl and, and Asda and, and, Al, and Aldi and Morrisons it is not a bad thing and I think uh, for those reasons this is a reasonable site, site for a supermarket and clearly I do welcome the, the, eight, the eight, eight homes that are going to be built there so I'll be supporting Thank that. you. Councillor Clarkson? Thank you Chair, I disagree with Councillor Sanger but however uh, little say that they've been looking for a place to build for 10 years. This is just off centre of a high density uh, housing estate it's going to bring with it more traffic uh, more pollution nit nitrous oxide it's going to it's going to be a danger to the children in the area and there's going to be a lot of deliveries also i think basically uh, it should be it should be else it should be elsewhere there's, there's going to be definitely a rise in pollution in that area and not only that, there's going to be uh, light pollution and everything what comes around. It's, it's surrounded by a housing development. And again, I'm sorry, I, I cannot go for this one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clarkson. Councillor McCann. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I shall be supporting this. I think this is in the wrong place. It's a wrong, it's going to be a massive store and surrounded by quite dense housing. And I think it's allocated housing land. We're constantly told we need more housing land. So I, I think it's an inappropriate use of this piece of land. And we're voting against it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else got any comments? No? Okay, we'll go ahead to the vote. Right, the proposal is outline planning application for the erection of eight dwelling houses, users class C3, and a retail food store, use class A1 with access car parking, services, landscape and associated works, all matters reserved except access. And its the recommendation is to grant conditionally. Councillor Sangar. Oh. Okay, Councillor Dan. 
or Councillor Hurst. Four, Chair. Councillor McCann. Against, Chair. Councillor Rosling Joseph. Four, Chair. Councillor Davidson. Four, Chair. Councillor Clarkson. Against, Chair. Councillor Garbutt. Against, Chair. Councillor Chaplin. Four, Chair. And I will be voting for. Okay, Craig, could you? Chair, yeah, I have uh, seven votes for and three votes against. That's exactly what I've got, yeah. Thank you very much. So the recommendation is granted. Thank you. Okay, then. Um, Can we get a natural bit... break, Chair? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, I'm so yeah. sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, four o'clock. Yeah. So shall we have 10 minutes? Is that long enough? Mm. Sorry, ladies. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Yeah. Okay. If you want to take your videos off while you have your break. Okay, and we'll reconvene at just gone ten past. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, you're not on mute. Oh, sorry. But it's all right. It's we can just mean. hear. We can just hear scraping. Me and my broken foot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so sorry. Shuffling because I've um, broken my little. So.
<laughs> but I can't help it because I can't sleep at the moment. No, it was HSBC. I've been trying to sort of bounce back loan out now for um, 12 weeks. And Paul Blomfield's had to step in because if I don't get this loan, I'm going to have to shut in two weeks. So we can hear you. Jane, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I'm here. No, I'm here now. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. I'm back. Oh, where's my camera? Oh, it's there. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. Mm. Are we nearly back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've all moved place now on the screen. This is very distracting. Okay. One, two, three. Sure. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Paul. No, it's okay. Uh, just to let you know, we, we've paused the webcasting, so the only people that can observe at the moment are us in the room plus the attendees. Okay. So when you're ready to go, if you could just give me the nod and then just give me a few for, seconds. Um, have we got everybody here? We just need Craig here. Paul, can you take Dinah out, please? Because she's no longer needed. Certainly, will do. Yeah. Why have we got two Patricias before we restart? I've got a Patricia right at the, you know, a blank Patricia. <laughs> Sorry, Patricia. Trish. Yeah, um, Trish. I've got the agenda on one screen. Oh, right, I'll that's OK. No, it's been, um, I know, I kept looking at it. And because you're, you're new to me, I kept thinking, is that a speaker? <laughs> Just throwing me. Realized, um, but no, 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 it's fine. I've done the other one, so I have to go <laughs> on to the iPad. I can see all the faces, but I can only really see nine like you mm. on the iPad. So Lovely. Okay, well, that answered that for me. Thank you very much. Right, we're fine. Uh, we're all here now. We're fine, Paul, so we okay. can restart the meeting. I'll start I'll it just... now. Lovely. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for giving us all a couple of minutes. Okay, right, we'll restart with the agenda. And this is application, um, this is item 7C, application number 20 stroke 00, 
0800-352-352 stroke FUL, Post Office 509 Pittsmoor Road, Sheffield, S39AU. Okay, and I think this is, is this yours, yours Lucy? It is, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, are you okay if I share the screen, Chair? Yes, please, if you don't mind. Can you see that okay, please, Chair? Yeah, fine yeah. by me. Okay, thank you. Um, so, Chair, this is a proposal to demolish an existing building, which was um, formerly a shop and post office with, with a flat above. I think most members will be familiar with it. I'll, I'll run through the slides shortly, Chair, but I'll just give a bit of an introduction. Um, the use of the post office ceased in the summer of last year, um, the, and the, actually that tenant surrendered the premises is early um, and Royal Mail advertised for tenants um, after that point but the, there's been no interest. Um, there are some um, relatively near post offices on Ellesmere Road and, and Fir Vale, uh, although they are, they are more than 400 metres but they are on good bus routes. Uh, the proposal is for a new development, um, it's a three-storey brick and slate bu building um, with six two-bedroom flats and three one-bedroom flats. Um, one of the things to note is that there is no car parking proposed as part of the development. And if, if you're familiar with this site, I've just displayed some photographs now. So it's this building um, here that's uh, that's got the artificial frontage on it. And it's been quite, it's been altered a lot in the past. Um, and obviously you'll realize it's on a very awkward junction arrangement. So really there wouldn't be a possibility of providing parking on this specific site because of its, because of its constraints. I'll just, uh, just run through the slides that, um, as I say, I'm sure you'll be familiar. Um, on the right hand side here, that's the listed gatehouse that's the nearest listed building to the proposal, but it is the across the road diagonally from the site. Um, and these are just some more images of the of the nearby streets. One of the obviously issues, one of the key issues is, is car parking. Um, and this is just to illustrate that, that it is a, a narrow lane next to it, which is um, Shire Cliff, I think it's Shire Cliff Lane, that one. Um, so that is quite narrow. So it, it's understandable that there have been concerns raised about car parking. Um, so Chair, this is the proposed layout of the of the site. Um, so you can, you can see that it's a, an L-shaped um, proposal um, and then this is the these are the elevations I think I've got a better image there of the elevations because there have been quite a few comments obviously about about design so I think the key issues in this case really are um, land use policy design um, scale and mass of the building um, the impact on the the listed buildings and, and the historic park it's adjacent to Abbeyfield Abbey Abbey Park um, adjacent I'll go back to the um, the aerial shot, just so you're familiar with that. Um, so Abbeyfield Park is across the way, just here. Um, and then obviously the effect on living conditions of both the future occupiers and the neighbouring properties. Um, obviously a key issue is highways and the parking implications, and then the impact on landscaping, because the proposal does um, involve the removal of some trees. Um, but I think that the report covers these issues extensively, and I think you do have some speakers in favour. So um, rather than um, elongate the process, I'm sure things will come out in members' questions. But um, if I just leave you with the image of the proposal um, there, um, firstly, and then I'll stop sharing the screen. And obviously I can share it later, Chair, if you need me to go back to that. Um, given that there, you've got some speakers, I think I'll, I'll end my presentation there, if that's okay with you. No, that's fine. It was, um, it was nice and thorough. Right, we have no speakers against, and we have two speakers for the application. And I have a Mr. Tarloughlin Durban, I'm really sorry if I've uh, mispronounced that. If you could bring him through, please, um, Phil. Thank you. <laughs> have I written it down wrong? Oh. <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon, Chair. My name is Tarloughlin Dub. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Have you got video or are you? Yes. You don't need to do... use it if you don't wish to use no, it. No, no. Um, forgive me. That's fine. And I apologise for mispronouncing your name. I'd written it down incorrectly. <laughs> um, I, that name has been mispronounced um, my entire <laughs> life. So you are forgiven. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> right. 
go ahead. Thank you. You've got five minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair and Councillors, and thank you for this opportunity to address you in support of the Office's recommendations to approve this planning application. This former post office was run by Mr and Mrs Athi, who both, both at age 64 and suffering from ill health decided to retire in, in March 2017. I am their son-in-law and we are a small family business. The suggestion made by one objector that some out of town greedy developer is trying to make a quick profit from this development it is absurd. The family have used its best endeavors to try and acquire a new tenant for the premises. A lease was um, agreed and the tenant prematurely uh, left uh, and the property has been empty for many, many months now. Royal Mail advertised the site on its website for a new postmaster, but no interest in it was received. In October 2019, we instructed estate agents to sell the property and since then not a single offer has been forthcoming. Since the closure of this uh, post office, despite our best efforts to keep the site secure, I'm afraid the site has been the target for repeated vandalism, antisocial behavior, drug abuse, sexual activity, uh, in fact, and fly tipping. We therefore believe there is no commercial viability left in this property. It is unsellable and it is unlettable. The prognosis uh, is very bleak indeed. We propose that this site is redeveloped to deliver six two-bedroom apartments and three one-bedroom apartments, good size apartments. The development in itself it is modest, very modest, and is referred to as small scale uh, by your offices. As was stated to the planning officers in December 2019, pre-COVID I may add, uh, during a pre-application meeting that we had uh, with the planning uh, department, uh, we suggested that the target for these apartments uh, would be local NHS workers. It is to be noted, and you will, I'm sure, be aware that there are several hospitals in close proximity to this site. Northern General, about a mile away, Sheffield Children's, Hallamshire, Charles Clifford Dental, Western Park, all about 2.5 miles away from this site. As the past few months have confirmed to us all, NHS workers are the frontline staff in our society and clapping for their efforts every Thursday, of course, is to be encouraged. But what our key workers also need is good quality, affordable housing in close proximity to their place of work. Under the national planning policy framework, local authorities are asked to support alternative uses that will help meet unmet needs for development in the area. The stark reality, as we all know, is that empty retail units have become a common feature, even in areas of cities which are much more attractive to the market than this site. We say the planning system must respond to this and welcome alternative uses, not reject them. The refusal of this application we submit will be wholly contrary to the thrust of the NPPF. A recent indication from Her Majesty's government on the 1st of July, addressing the economic fallout as a result of COVID-19 is to build, build, build at a faster pace. Our prime minister has unveiled plans for the most radical reforms of our planning system since the second world war. Ministers have recently pledged to overhaul planning rules by allowing builders to demolish vacant shops and build homes in their place without the need for planning permission. We submit that this, this proposal, this application before you today, is precisely the kind that the Prime Minister had in his mind. The objections that have been raised and dealt with comprehensively by your officers fall into three broad, broad categories. Lack of parking. As you have heard, this, this application is without parking as a result of expert opinion, confirming that the road layout is far too complex for safe entry and exit into the site. In their opinion, it would be an accident waiting to happen. However, we propose a storage facility for cycles to encourage green transport. The site is on excellent city bus routes and the development is aimed at those who can manage without a car, either uh, because their place of work is in close proximity, within walking distance, or they can easily access the public transport. 
On page 112, your officer states, quote, given the very low anticipated level of car ownership associated with this development, significant issues regarding congestion would not arise. You will note that there has not been any objections from your highway office officers. Second objection is the design. This application follows on from a comprehensive pre-application that was dealt with fully uh, by your officers. Even after submission of this application, the planning officers have continued to provide their guidance, support and recommendations, which we have fully adopted. The design has therefore been subject to considerable positive amendments throughout the planning process. 30 seconds, thank you. Repeated criticism that the building looks like an eyesore, that no thought has been given to the design, that the building has been designed without a shred of consideration to the surrounding buildings, in my submission is therefore uh, without any merit. On page 109, your officer states that the development would be of high quality and the development has been sensitively designed. It is with regret that the post office has closed, but I'm afraid the objections should be redirected to Royal Mail. They are the ones that have reduced Postmaster's salary to an okay. unacceptable <laughs> okay. As much as I might agree with you, I think uh, we need to stop, but thank you so much. <laughs> I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. If we could... Uh, Mr. Deb, leave the um, meeting and bring in a Mr. Richard Todd. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Just need your camera, Mr. Todd. Oh, hello. Hello. Nice to hello. see you. Mm -hmm. All right. OK. You've got five minutes. OK. I'll warn you 30 seconds just before. OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you all for affording your valuable time to attend this hearing. I will be concise in my submissions in support of approving this application. I will address the goals of my client in submitting such proposals. I was approached with an objective to provide a high standard of living for local residents with the aim of attracting professionals and predominantly doctors and nurses working in the local NHS facility. Provide a flagship residential building that incorporates its surroundings, provides sustainable development which encourages community lifestyle. The proposal to provide three number two bedroom dwellings and six number one bedroom, one bedroom dwellings has been driven by the following design principles and modern residential development that sits sympathetically with its surroundings. This is achieved with the use of natural sustainable materials such as red brick and natural slate to the facade, sitting in direct relation to stone walls of Sheffield City, in which we are all familiar, stepping in both facades and the roof with the gradient of the road and marry the contrasting heights of the neighbouring property. The rich use of natural materials are enhanced by aluminium windows and trims, overstated recesses to the brickwork and windows further enhanced with the design of creating shadows on the facade. Pixmoor Road and Sharcliffe Road is very unforgiving to to introduce an additional traffic to the site would be both difficult and irresponsible. And such sites should be encouraged to champion the use of alternative and sustainable transport methods. The application has been subject to extensive pre-application discussions and design development with the local authority, which is evident in the detail of the proposed document. Numerous planning policies have been met MPPF1 delivering sustainable development, meeting the local housing demands and encouraging the uses of national produced building materials. MPPF4 promoting sustainable transport. Excellent transport links have in and out of the city centre. Bicycle stores provided for each apartment being able to store up to two new bikes and additional accessories. Delivering a wide choice of high quality homes, NPPF6. All dwellings meet, exceed, meet and exceed national space standards. 
and the private secured amenity and the private secured amenity to the rear ensures a quality community focused living. MPPF7 requir requiring good design. Again, the design has been through much development in achieving and meeting this policy. My conclusion, I trust you will, I trust you will all agree, all objectives have been met, not only to satisfy, but to exceed standards in providing a modern contemporary design to a focal node of the local area. It would be detrimental to the development plan and objectives to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you very much and under time, I appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Okay, Paul. Thank you. Right, uh, Lucy, could you respond to the comments made by the speakers? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think I largely agree with, really with what uh, Mr Dub and Mr Todd have been saying. Um, I would reiterate that certainly in terms of the space standards, these are some of the largest apartments that I have seen recently. I mean, members will have been familiar with the city centre schemes where we've had fairly small apartments. Actually, these are very generous, so they are correct that they are very generous, generously sized. Um, and certainly in terms of the architecture, our officers have worked really hard uh, with the mm. applicant and the, and the agent to deliver a good quality scheme. So, so we do agree that it's a good quality scheme. Um, and obviously we do accept that um, there is no parking on site, that can't be delivered on site. And so we've struck, you know, you have to strike a balance. I think this is a very unusual location in, in, in highways terms. I don't know whether Helen wants to add something about that because it clearly is a key issue. Um, but in design terms, certainly, um, you know, there's no there's no impact from my mind on neighbours. They've designed it very well to to, to sit um, in between neighbours. So there's no overlooking. The, the scale is very appropriate. Um, so I think it's it is the highways issue that really is, is the critical one. But I think it'd be helpful probably for Helen just to say a little bit more about that to, to help you with that. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, I fully support what Lucy said in terms of actually providing parking to this site. There is no way that it could feasibly or safely be provided. Um, and in actual fact, I mean, there is a there is an existing vehicular access which will, will be removed. And that is actually, I think, a safety benefit, you know, in the first instance. Mm. Um, I do I do accept, yes, ideally you would have some, some level of parking provision on there, but uh, uh, say having said that um the site is in such an accessible location um in terms of access, public transport walking cycling um that it is one of the better locations where you could possibly have you know a car free development um mm -hmm. the fact that, that adequate cycle parking is provided good quality cycle parking again is also something that we've taken on board so i, th I think on balance you know it, there would be no reason to refuse this from a highways point of view Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Helen. Right, I'll open it up to members' questions. Councillor Chaplin. Um, this is not a question. It, it's a point about Royal Mail. Royal okay, Mail well, do I don't really think, no, I don't think we should um, go into that. It's planning committee, as much as uh, I might find it really interesting. I think no, they, care, they were, yeah. the business was maligned. It's the post office that would have dealt with postmasters, okay. not okay. Royal that's fine. No, no, I take your point. I just didn't want to sort of debate out that, that's all. Have we got any questions at all to do with the application? No. Any comments by any member? Yeah, Councillor Rosling Josephs? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, I, I fully support this. Uh, application. Um, I remember going past it earlier on this year, just before lockdown, on my way to the Northern General, and thinking how sad it was that the building was mm. falling to pieces, and that I was surprised then that it hadn't been uh, somebody hadn't done something with it. So I'm pleased to see that somebody's got the courage to actually deal with that site. And the 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 the, the drawings that Lucy put up earlier, I thought looked very attractive in that area. And I, I fully support it, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hurst. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, looking at the designs and the, the, the detailed drawings, it looks as if there's been some very creative use of this site. Mm. And I look forward to um, seeing it, in, it come to fruition. Fully support it. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I must say, I think I think it's quite exciting that we've got a car free development and there's nothing to stop us from doing that. And it's definitely, you know, it looked really exciting as well. Any more comments before we go to? OK, OK, right then, before my screen disappears. OK, so comment. <laughs> Councillor Davidson, did you want to make a comment? Are you oh, yes. that I, 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 I'm, full, <laughs> I'm fully supportive and good luck to them. Right, OK, then. OK, I didn't want to jump the gun, I'm sorry. OK, right then. So the um, proposal is for demolition of the existing building and erection of three Sorry, Chair, Councillor Clarkson's got his hand up. Oh, has he? Councillor Clarkson. Oh, so sorry, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Clarkson, how could I miss you out? <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yeah, you're uh, can I say it makes a refreshing change to have an apartment, like Lucy said, come mm. before us that has got space. Yeah. Because a lot of these apartments, they're like shoeboxes. Yeah. And it's it's great mm. to see, and both speakers spoke very eloquently, and uh, I will be supporting this. No, they did, and I couldn't agree more. It was a it was a really exciting development. Okay, right then. Anybody else before? Um... Right, you're testing me. Anyway, OK, then. Right, I'll go back then. So the proposal is the demolition of the existing building and erection of a three storey building to form six times two bedroom flats and three times one bedroom flats. OK, so the recommendation is to grant conditionally. Right. OK, starting with Councillor Andrew Sangar. Uh, four. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dams. Four. Councillor Diane Hurst. Four, Chair. Councillor Bob McCann. Four. Councillor Chris Rosling Josephs. Four, Chair. Councillor Roger Davidson. Four, Chair. Councillor Jack Clarkson. Four, Chair. Councillor Peter Garbutt. Four, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Mike Chaplin. Four, Chair. Lovely, and I will be voting for the development. Thank you. Right, on to item 7D, which is on page 119, which yeah, is... Can I... Oh, so sorry. Yeah, no, apologies. Oh, yeah, sorry, we need to go to the vote. It's my fault, so sorry, Paul. No, mm -hmm. I, think we've, I, think, I think we've had the vote, and apologies for interrupting. I've just... Chris um, Healy is presenting the next item, item 4, but... His, his Zoom account is just frozen, so he's just been in touch. Um, so I want us to go to the next one. I wonder whether we go to the update for Loxley Works first and give Chris a chance. And I, I don't know whether, Craig, if you mm. can just see if you can get in touch with Chris separately to see. I think he's gone out and he's going to come, try, come back into the meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I'll pass it back to you. No, 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 no. That's fine. Is, is that okay? Yeah. So, right, just let me just get this up on my screen then. I'll just give everybody a chance to get to item eight, do you know, while we... 7E. 7E. Sorry, it's number seven. It's item eight on mine. Is it the update? Yeah, oh, yes. It's item eight on mine. Yeah, it's item eight on mine. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chair, there's no office of presentation because it is just an update. I think members will hopefully remember in, I think it was the committee on the 18th of February this year that we we, we discussed um, Loxley Works, which was an application to do some conversion and, and demolition works to, to some buildings to create 11 dwelling houses. Um, the application that was presented to members was presented as a Section 73 application to bury and remove certain conditions and regularise things that had taken place on site. Um, it was the officer recommendation to grant conditioning was approved at committee um, and committee asked for us to come back with an update within the next six months to let um, to let members know in particular how we'd got on um, with issues around surface and foul water drainage because the conditions that were put in place asked for further details and for work to be carried out within the six month period. And Chair, we've not reached the six month period yet. That will be the 18th of this month. Um, but this is the closest committee to that date. So I, I'm just reporting back in terms of where we are. 
um, and, and suggesting what the strategy that officers are, are proposing to move forward with. Um, so the two key conditions, there are other conditions around landscaping and green roofs and, and bird and bat boxes, but the two key conditions that required additional works were surface water, which was condition 25, and foul, foul drainage, which was condition 26. Um, the surface water requirements were for the applicant to submit within eight weeks updated details for our approval and within the six month period then to have implemented those details. Um, we've had no details submitted to us for our formal approval as part of a conditions application for revised surface water um, drainage. And as such, it's extremely unlikely. In fact, it, it, we won't be in a position where any approved surface water drainage will be in place within the six month period. Um, in relation to foul water, whilst the six month period hasn't lapsed, we are aware of information that, 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 that the, the details that were approved by members in the February committee won't be in place within that six month period. Um, the developer has cited a couple of reasons that the principal planning reason is around, well, not a planning reason, but the principal reason cited is around COVID implications, um, employees being furloughed, et cetera, and therefore the inability to provide details and to undertake the work. From an officer point of view, I think whilst all of that is appreciated, the, 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 you know, the, there's a substantial history to the site and around the drainage issues in particular. And, and the six month period has been a substantial period. And, and from an officer point of view, our recommendation is to, is to pursue enforcement action once the six month period lapses at the end of this month. The other option on the table that we, we'd obviously take instruction from members on today is whether members wanted to offer an additional period for the, those conditions to be complied with, um, potentially an additional three month period. Um, like I say, from an officer point of view, our, our recommendation is actually to begin to pursue enforcement action in relation to these issues because they are they are causing issues on site. Um, but I'll pass it over to you, Chair, to, 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 to seek views, I guess, in terms of how, how members wish to proceed. Yeah, um, I'm happy to take um, questions. OK, Councillor Garbutt. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to ask um, if we do accept your recommendation. Um, <clears throat> what implications does that have? Does that mean you're going to pursue um, the uh, contractor for, um, is, is that reparations, some, some money, basically? Um, uh, and what implications does that have for actually getting the work done? Um, how will the work get done? I'm really concerned that the work needs to get done, that the people who live there are you know, um, living in conditions which I wouldn't want to live in. So I, w I really am concerned about getting that work done more than anything. Thank you, Michael. Uh, the, 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 in the first instance, we would serve a breach of condition notice and seek an understanding from, from the, the relevant developer owner in terms of their approach to it. If we weren't satisfied that the approach that they're putting forward to resolve this in, in a timely manner once the enforcement notice has been served, then, then we would seek to enforce against that notice, and ultimately that might end up in in in, in a court case where there could be some there could be some compensation, etc. They can also appeal against the enforcement notice, and that and that would be heard by by independently by the inspectorate. So there are different connotations in relation to in, in relation to where enforcement action will could potentially go. It's not, it's not a straightforward answer to that question, unfortunately, because of the different avenues. Can I come back on that? Yes, you can, Councillor Galbert. Okay, I understand that there are also certain court cases going on at the moment regarding this. Am I right in, in thinking that? Sure, yeah, there, 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 are, there is a civil case taking place at the moment between the existing residents or certainly some of the existing residents and the developer in relation to, in relation to costs associated with the, with the relevant drainage works and who's responsible for carrying those out. Um, that sits outside of the planning regime and, and, and shouldn't play any part in terms of our decision making today. Thank you. Thank you for that clarity. OK, mm. Councillor Davidson, I have next. Right. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I mean, it's on the same, same sort of lines. I mean, if um, if they don't meet the conditions, we can't uh, we can't go forward. And uh, uh, I mean, it, 
unless, of course, um, uh, we think that um, uh, we can extend it. it. Is there any reason uh, that COVID has really had an effect on the decision, uh, or not not the decision, but the um, uh, the applicant's uh, inability to uh, to come up with the goods with the conditions? Um, through the chair, I think, I mean, you know, we, we've all had our own experiences around COVID and, and, and the, the challenges, the challenges that it's put forward with us. I don't think there's any doubt that, that there's various permissions that are needed, particularly to undertake the foul drainage works, there's permissions from Yorkshire Water, there's permissions from highways um, in terms of existing connections. Um, and, and each individual company and business have had to, will have had to deal with their own obstacles. And I can't speak completely for this developer and, 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 and his company in that sense. But I don't think there's any doubt that, that, that COVID would have had some implications on their ability to meet the requirements of the conditions. I think from an officer point of view, the beginning of enforcement proceedings doesn't necessarily mean there's no discretion. You know, you would still need to show reasonableness within the enforcement process. Um, so I guess what we're talking about today is whether we, we start the enforcement process or we don't start it. It doesn't mean there isn't discretion to take certain things into account during that, during that process in its own right from a reasonableness perspective. But yeah, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it would be reasonable to say we disagree completely at all that, that COVID hasn't had an impact on the ability to meet the conditions. But I do know, and it is worth noting that the, the surface water condition 25, the first part of that was for a formal formal details to be submitted and agreed with the local authority within an eight week period. Mm. And that that condition's five, five and a half months old. And that's not unre an unreasonable expectation for that to have been carried out. And, and it's noted that that's not been done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Hurst. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think this is you've gone part of the way to answering this because um, we want the meeting was very concerned about the conditions that those residents were living in which is why we asked for, for a report back to make sure that um, the conditions we felt were necessary um, had been complied with and you said Michael that they haven't even though um, the simplest of them within eight weeks um, probably could have been met before the lockdown I, I want to ensure that the conditions are met and the living conditions are improved for the residents there. And I want to give officers the, um, the most wriggle room, I suppose, in order to establish that. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for a, a feeling. Um, would you want us to um, go directly for enforcement um, or do you think a, a a three month extension would just be, um, would you be back here in three months time saying the same things um, is, is really is really my question. Thank you, Councillor Hurst. I think Chair, from an officer point of view, I think, I think the right thing to do at this stage is to move into more formal enforcement proceedings. Um, I think, like I say, th there is discretion and reasonableness always needs to be applied within the enforcement process in any case. Um, but actually, uh, from an from an officer's perspective, holding off starting those formal enforcement processes for another three months, actually, I, I, I wouldn't. I, I think is an unre unnecessary delay. Really, given given the background and given that none of the none of these elements of the particular conditions have been complied with across the past the past five month period. Thank you. I have Councillor McCann, who's got a question. Uh, so my question being answered, Chair, thank you. Lovely. Is there anyone else that wishes to ask a question or make a comment? So you're asking us to, um, oh, Councillor Rosling joseph so sorry, thank you. And Councillor Dams, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, I remember this coming to the committee uh, and, the, and the strength of feeling of the committee at the time. I, I want to give the officers as much uh, support as we can. Let's get this dealt with because those people have had a horrendous time there and we, we should do everything we can to support them within the, the planning uh, regime that we've got in this country at the moment. So I'm fully in support of, of what officers want to do. And, and I think we should go ahead with, with that uh, enforcement action, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, Councillor Dams. I agree with that, Chair. I think we've been assured there's enough riddle room within that um, to um, to cut them a bit of slight. But I think if we want this doing quickly, which I'm sure we all do, I think we need to support the officers in this one. Yeah. Okay. So, Michael, um, do we take a roll call on this for the vote or a show of hands? Would it be better um, to have a roll call? Yeah, I think I might defer to, for, to Trish. Yeah. Trish, thank you. Yeah, I keep calling her Patricia. That's my mum's name. <laughs> Trish. Thank uh, you, Trish. Um, as, as far as I can see, this is an update for members to yeah. keep them informed of an ongoing mm. situation. So there's no decision to be made. Um, if officers require a steer, they can take that from the debate mm. and questions mm. and the comments that have just gone forward. Um, it's clear members are supporting yeah. enforcement action and the direction that officers are taking. But if there's no decision to be made, that's there's fine. no vote. Yeah, that's great. Just ticking every box because we seem yeah. to be getting all these strange I'm things today. <laughs> Lovely. I think you've got a clear steer from committee, uh, Michael, yeah, to go ahead. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. Turn back up at the bottom of the screen as well, Chair. So. Sorry. Chris is back. I know, it's, I've seen him sneaking, we've seen you sneaking, right, you've just got, to, now I've got to find, you know, on my, um, on here, that's okay, right, okay, lovely, okay, thank you, okay, so we're now going back to item 7D, which is application number 20-0040-FUL, stroke stroke the White House, Vicarage Lane, Sheffield, S17, 3GX. And I'm going to hand over to Chris Healy, who's going to present the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just share my screen uh, briefly while I, while I talk through um, the, the basics of the scheme. Can you see that? We can, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so um, this is the site here, um, and the important thing to note is it's within the residential area of Door, uh, Vicarage Lane here. Uh, the important thing to note is the conservation area boundary runs there, which is actually a public footpath, uh, and there, which I'll show you in a moment, is the front boundary wall of the property, um, meaning that the site is excluded from the conservation area, but these areas here are within it. Um, and, and this portion here is also outside the conservation area. So this is conservation area, the site isn't. Um, there is also a listed building, which is Woodbine Cottage, which is here. Uh, it's approximately 37 meters away. Um, and you'll see some images of that uh, shortly. So the application is to remove the existing dwelling on the site um, and to replace that with an apartment scheme um, of nine apartments. That's six uh, two bed apartments and three three bed apartments. Um, and I'll just flip, flip through the sides just to show you a little, little more about that. So that's the site layout plan. Uh, this fence panel here is the commencement of the conservation area and that's the public footpath down the side. Here is the site entrance, which has been retained and utilized uh, to serve the development. Uh, and the stone wall across the frontage here is the boundary of the conservation area. Uh, so the grass highway verge um, is, is within the conservation area, but the site isn't. Uh, a further image uh, as, you, as you turn in now down um, Vicarage Lane. The existing house you will see is here um, and on this and one or two other images you'll see this this tree here which is a horse chestnut tree uh, and that is a tree with disease that is intended to be removed uh, and would be removed regardless of the development. It's not needed to be removed for the development, it's been removed because of its health. Um, that is also another shot of the, the access to the site, showing that the site falls down slightly as you enter it. Uh, this is the garage block to the existing house. So you can see that the house is well screened by the, the site frontage. These are neighbouring cottages which are in the conservation area, but not 
uh, listed. And this is Woodbine Cottage down here, which, which is listed. So you can see the relationship between the two there. Uh, in essence, you see the site entrance in the same view, but not the site itself. Uh, this is an access down to um, number 17 and 19 Vicarage Lane. Um, number seven, you can just see the existing house here and number 17 uh, down here. That's referred to quite a bit in the, in the officer's report. Uh, this is the existing house as it stands at the moment. So you do get a glimpse through the site um, and the proposed re uh, replacement um, apartment scheme is taller than this. Uh, it's approximately uh, 2.3 metres taller to eaves than this eaves line. And then there is a further uh, metre, metre and a half or so where there are some gables formed. Um, and sorry, the ridge height is also about 2.3 metres higher than existing. So it's, it's very roughly speaking up here, um, the height of the, the new property. Um, that's the existing dwelling. It's not the mo it's not a dwelling that is uh, is worthy of uh, protection um, or of any particular architectural merit. Um, so we have no objections to its removal. Uh, and these are just some further images of the the uh, the rear of the property. Um, and it's quite important to note uh, here the relationship with the property at number nineteen, which sits here, um, and seventeen here. So this is a side gable of number seventeen. And its garden is here just beyond this hedge, which is to be retained. Uh, turning round to the left, further image of the hedge. And this tree here also is removed um, by necessity in the main because of the provision of a, a carport, which I'll show you shortly. So here's the scheme. Uh, the existing, uh, hopefully you can see the green outline is the existing property. Um, so you'll see it's in, in, to all intents and purposes, the same position here relative to number 19, um, but grows about five meters in that direction. Um, and varying, as, because this is a staggered line, uh, between kind of two and 3.5 meters uh, increase in this direction. At the back of the site here is a carport, uh, which houses um, approximately eight vehicles. Uh, another three under, under Croft here and three here. Uh, so that's 14 on site in total to serve the um, nine apartments. Um, the trees that have been removed are the horse chestnut here and the cherry tree that sits here. Otherwise trees have been retained uh, and an additional planting is being provided. Uh, there's a small amount of vegetation on this boundary here that uh, that would be removed for the provision of the parking spaces. Uh, there's the parking layout. So you can see the Undercroft car parking uh, here and the carport here uh, with the access coming in here. You also note here that there is a, a basement flat uh, cycle parking. And then as the scheme goes up the floors, uh, there is the, uh, the layout of the, the scheme with individual flats, some individual gardens, but also terraces. And the terraces are worth noting because they're what referred to in the report in providing opportunities for overlooking, uh, which has been a, a, a concern for local residents um, and, and for officers in dealing with the application. But uh, from an officer perspective, we, we've had reassurance from site visits, from discussions with the uh, applicant. Um, and I'll show you shortly, uh, this image, um, which demonstrates the, the angle of view into the, the rear garden of number 17. Um, the importance of this is to note that for you to reach a position where someone here on the second floor can see someone stood in the garden of uh, number 17, that distance would be in the order of 26, 27 metres. Um, which we feel considerably exceeds our guidelines for, for privacy. Um, so this image is intended to demonstrate that, that that's not uh, a concern and that's why we feel that that's acceptable. That's the, the property when viewed from the front. So it's a stone and, 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 uh, and brick property. You can see it's taller than the existing, uh, but we don't feel that's out of character. 
with the large properties that are in the area. This is the rear of the property, uh, which obviously appears much taller because it, there's an excavation taking place in the rear garden. Um, and so you get a, an apparent four stories, although uh, in practice, in, in the, the bulk of it is, is three stories here. Um, and they're the, they're the side elevations chair uh, that show the relationship with the, uh, with the carport here. Um, I just wanted to also point out relationship to other properties on, from the plan. Um, so uh, these are the cottages here that we saw. They have a side elevation. There are no windows in the side elevation of, this, of the new property. Number five, Vicarage Lane is here. Uh, that faces the site uh, with its garden uh, uh, in between that and the footpath. Um, and as I've already pointed out, number 17 and number 19 here. We have had one, um, I can just draw members' attention, Chair, before I close, um, to item two on the supplementary uh, information, um, which uh, confirms that we've had one additional representation since uh, the agenda report was prepared, um, which, which further objects and states that whilst the um, amendments to the scheme in removing windows from the side elevations of the property um, are, are, have, have addressed that issue. There are remaining concerns that they feel are still of paramount importance, including the, the overdevelopment of the site, uh, that it's out of scale and character. Uh, it deprives residents of uh, amenity and privacy because of its bulk and height, uh, and the harmful impact it has uh, owing to uh, insufficient car parking provision on Vicarage Lane, which at that point is, is four metres in width. Those issues are, are already addressed, Chair, in the report, so we don't propose to comment further on those uh, here. I'll stop sharing now. Thank you. Okay, that was nice and slick. Okay, lovely. We have three speakers, two against the application and one for. If we could bring Councillor Colin Ross in, please who's speaking against the application. Councillor Ross, we can't see you yet. <laughs> Lovely, I can I'm, see I'm, you. I'm, 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 I'm there, yes. You are there, yeah. thank you. Thank you for the delay, sorry for the delay. Okay, it, Lovely. It's okay, it's been a long afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, for, for you all. Um, Five okay. minutes, Councillor Ross. Thank you. I uh, obviously objecting to this and I want to give members of the committee confidence that they can actually go against the officer recommendation in this case. Um, draw your attention to a number of points. On the adjacent site, and it is adjacent to this, there's the site of 135 Door Road, which members may remember the long planning history on that site, where this committee quite rightly rejected proposals for a similar development of apartments on that site twice and it was both times upheld by the planning inspector it has been over development and out of character which I contend this present development is. Um, it's certainly out of character with the, its surrounding areas and as in the report and in the Door Village Society um, submissions as well it, it's in contravention of CS31 um, CS53 and H14 in particular. CS31 re, um, refers to density and particularly refers to density in, in keeping with the surrounding nature. And as you can see from the aerial photographs of that, um, the nine apartments here would be way out of character with the surrounding area. And it is an important factor that this is actually um, right on the boundary of the conservation area and that should give it uh, be given an added weight. Um, CS74 talks about overdevelopment and the three, but actually four storey development here with the ridge height, some uh, well over two metres higher than the existing ones and the blocked appearance from the rear in particular makes it again out of character and over the development of the area. It's worth pointing out that actually the Door Village Society and, and myself, to be, to be honest, although it's not stated in the report, 
wouldn't uh, want to oppose the demolition of the existing building, but we feel that the nine apartments on the site is overdevelopment of that, and the Door Village Society would welcome a smaller number of apartments and actually a lower rise development. And we think that this should have been the, the proposal in this case. Uh, further, the Door Neighbourhood Plan is in its final stages before hopefully being approved by a referendum in, in May ne next stage, and I believe should have been given greater weight than the officer gives it, because under national planning policy guidance, when you're at the later stages of emergence, the, uh, the, the plans should be given greater weight. Um, car parking, I believe, is totally inadequate on this site. There are nine apartments, some three bedrooms, and basically, if only one car per apartment would only give us five spares, and it's highly likely there's going to be more than one car by apartment. If you actually had two cars per apartment and then had to allow three for visitor spaces, which is the formula, it should actually be 21 parking spaces on site, which is actually um, shows the level of disagreement with, with the, the 14. Um, the the uh, officer says in in the uh, the report that this development would certainly be more visible than than the present house and i certainly agree with that it then goes on to say it sits comfortably within the street scene well i totally disagree with that with that contention i don't think this building sits to, uh, sits comfortably in the uh, in the uh, street scene at all it is overlooking, particularly of number 17 and, and uh, at number five at the back there, and that's acknowledging the report. And uh, Chris Healy drew attention to the fact that the terraces give people even more opportunity to overlook the neighbouring sites. So the report notes a number of points where weight is given to various policies and judgment call whether they should, should for refusal or not. The officer's report goes in favour of approval on a, a judgment call. I contend that the judgment actually should go uh, the other way in terms of rejection of this proposal, as I say, because of the overdevelopment of the site. It's too much on this small site on the edge of the conservation area in, in Dort. Thank you. And I think I'm within my five minutes there. You are. You've got another 30 seconds, but thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely. If we could um, bring Mr. Yates in, please, and take Mr. Ross, Councillor Ross, out. <laughs> Lovely. Yes, good afternoon. I can't see you, Mr. Yates, yet. Have you got your camera on or do you want to do this without? Either's fine. That's great. You just muted yourself now. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Thank you. You've yeah, welcome to committee and you have five minutes. Thank I'll you. I'll warn you 30 seconds before the end, okay? Thank you. Yes. My name is Michael. Yates. My house is 5 Vicarage Lane, which is the neighbouring property immediately north of the site. Uh, may I thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to, to speak today. Um, my objections cover three, three main issues. Um, number one, type and scale of the proposals. Um, I believe these proposals are, are of a type and scale inappropriate to the immediate surroundings. There are no other four-storey buildings nearby, most properties being two-storey houses of large or average size. The submitted front elevation drawing shows a very significant increase in presentation looking onto Vicarage Lane. Other apartment uh, buildings in the uh, 17 or, or the door area are located on wider roads with a much more open aspect. For example, the um, uh, King Egbert uh, caretaker site on Totley Brook Road. Um, the number of dwellings proposed, uh, nine, will effectively double the number of dwellings in a short length of Vicarage Lane. Um, as regards the site density, I, I think the site area is actually less than 0 0.19 hectares, going towards 0 0.18, 
this may not seem significant, um, but the, the lower figure gives a density approaching 50, 50 dwellings per hectare, and that is on the upper limit of the quoted range. I, I don't believe that this is in keeping with core strategy CS31, insofar as the density is not in keeping with the immediate area, and therefore does not respect the character of the area. I believe the proposals would constitute overdevelopment. Second uh, issue, parking provision and traffic. Vicarage Lane is barely four metres wide at the applicant site. It is insufficient width for two cars to pass. The far pavement is canted towards the roadway and it effectively reducing width by a hedge. Pedestrians therefore are edged onto the road. There's a blind bend near one end of the site and a hill near the other, in both cases with poor visibility. It's a quiet lane used as well by pedestrians and horse riders. And on school days, you have parents with young children and prams by necessity walking along the road verge. Um, Council Ross has, has been through the on-site parking spaces and I would agree entirely that um, up to possibly a total of 21 should be considered. And I believe that the maximum standards should be set here as there is a clear and compelling justification that they are necessary for managing highway safety on this narrow road. If 14 only are provided, this will inevitably result on on-street parking and given the road width, parking on that grass verge with detrimental effect on highway safety. My third point is the overbearing overshadowing. The present building is situated 11 metres from the north boundary facing my property. Um, the proposed building will move uh, four to five metres further north towards my property and three metres east towards the property, number five. At present, the nearest point to my house, at the present, at the nearest point to my house of the existing building, it is a single storey garage. At that same location, the proposed building will be seven and a half metres higher. That's from the revised applicant drawing. That is equivalent nearly to three conventional storey heights. I believe this constitutes an unacceptable level of overbearing or overshadowing. Additionally, there is currently a significant degree of screening afforded by trees and hedges along this boundary, all of which will be removed by the development. You've got 30 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. I understand that the committee have made a site visit on Monday and I hope they've been able to assess the proposals firsthand in the context of the surroundings, especially as regards the narrow width of Vicarage Lane, the poor visibility at the sharp bend brow of the hill, and the danger that the grass verge will be used for parking on. I believe approval would set a dangerous and irreversible precedent, allowing the encroachment of multi-storey development in sensitive areas on any sizable plots currently occupied by single dwellings. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Lovely. Okay, Paul, uh, we could, Mr Yates could leave and we could bring... Uh, Speaking for the application, uh, Mr. Norton. Oh, Northern, sorry. I... <laughs> Mr. Northern, yeah. Sorry, Mr. Northern, we can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? We certainly can, sorry. Uh, sorry, apologies for that. Uh, no worries, my name is, okay. My name You've is... got five minutes, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Graham Northern and I am the agent for the application. My client has lived in this property, the White House, for over 20 years. And due to a change in his circumstances, wants a different type of home. The White House was on the market for a period of two years with very little interest and no offers presented. The general comments were that it was a very dated building and not the type of property that people were looking for. It is his intention to live in one of the apartments once the development is completed. 
bearing this in mind, the proposals have been designed sympathetically to fit in with the styles and sizes of properties in the immediate vicinity and to a high standard of quality. The proposals as presented have undergone two phases of pre-application discussions with planning officers, which were very useful in amending proposals prior to the submission of the formal application. We have also removed side windows during the application and obscure screens have been provided to the uh, reef tourist and balcony areas. Parking provision, as you will note, is to the rear and side, leaving a landscape frontage uh, to the conservation area. The submission drawings, particularly the site sections, demonstrate how the building's design offers a split level form, which allows additional accommodation to be integrated with a rear basement level. And the basement level, I will point out, is misleading and giving a four story reference to the building at the rear. Um, just bear with me a second. Members of the committee at the site visit yesterday will have noted the change in levels at the rear garden, which is something that we are utilising in the design with additional excavation, which allows the front elevation to present a two storey scale to the conservation area with accommodation set within the roofs of two symmetrical gables. We know that the number of reputations that were received raised density and this has been addressed in the officer report, which outlines the proposals fall within the density parameters of policy CS26 of between 30 and 50 dwellings per hectare. Normal schemes that present overdevelopment of form, don't meet separation distances, fail to achieve adequate parking standards, and propose excessive frontage parking, and also struggle to achieve garden and landscaping areas of those provided in this scheme. We actually achieve 16.7 metres to the rear and 15 metres to the front. And as such, I don't feel you could consider the proposal overdevelopment. Reference has been made to 135 Door Road in representations and the speaker earlier. And I would point out that the, that scheme was for two blocks of seven apartments, 14 in total, which went against the grain of the area, which is depicted by singular large detached buildings set within spacious plots. Number 135 Door Road also presented design issues at appeal, resulting to, in two dismissals at appeal. The proposals in front of you are therefore a totally different proposition and as such are not comparable to that scheme. It is also noted that the height of the building has been referenced and that's also been addressed in the officer presentation. Reference has been made to the door neighbour plan which is still a draft document and as such cannot be given great weight and is indefinitely limited at best. The parking provision provided was agreed at the pre-application stage due to the sustainable location and walking distance to the village centre. And I would highlight that the parking standards are maximum standards, not minimum. We would highlight some of the representations that acknowledge a lack of new housing in the area, particular low maintenance, high quality accommodation of two and three bedroom nature. We also note representations which consider the proposal sympathetic in line with developments in the wider area that the proposal will create smaller homes, which will in turn free up larger homes in the wider area for larger families. I would also highlight that each of these apartments is over 100 square metres, providing spacious accommodation, which will indefinitely allow people to live in them throughout their lifespan, ages and disabilities. They are highly adaptable and lifts are incorporated within the block. The proposals present an opportunity to deliver eight new homes in the area, which is which presents a contribution to the Sheffield housing supply. Uh, the officer report makes clear the scheme is policy compliant. 30 minutes, 30 seconds, development. sorry. <laughs> to conclude the development proposal represents a sustainable form of development on previous developed land that will contribute to the demand of housing in Sheffield. The proposal is built on the central position of the existing property and utilise site gradients in a split level form. And we welcome the officer recommendation in support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, right, Paul, if Mr. Northern could leave. Thank you. I'll hand over to officers to respond to the comments made. Um, that was for both Chris and for, and for Helen. So, Chris. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think all the issues raised really are covered in the report, but I'll just touch on, on, on one or two things. Um, in terms of the reference to 135 Bill Road that's been mentioned by two of the three speakers there, um, 
I think the, the first thing to note is that each site is, each application is determined on its individual merits. Um, there are some similarities between this scheme and that one at, at Doro, but equally, uh, there are a number of differences as well, in, including, as Mr. Nolan said, um, that was for two large apartment blocks. Um, where the character is very much for, for large individual properties and individual grounds, which is actually what has ended up now being built at, at 135, one very substantial property. Um, but I think the main point in responding to that is that it, you have to deal with this application on its individual merits and not necessarily, not at, well, not at all in comparison with previous decisions made elsewhere. Um, the Door Neighbourhood Plan uh, is worth referring to because um, the Door Village Society response uh, included reference to that. It didn't. In, the response wasn't solely about that, but it included reference to that. Um, and the, the, the report attempts to set out um, an understanding of that, but it is quite a, a, a confused area. So I'll, I'll briefly kind of cover that. Essentially, when a, an emerging plan, as, as the MPPF paragraph refers to in the report, when, a, when an emerging plan uh, is coming forward, it, it can have various degrees of weight depending upon um, it, its stage. Um, well, three things really, the, the stage it's reached, um, whether there is, uh, whether there are a number of outstanding objections that are unresolved, um, and also whether the policies within it are compliant with the, the MPPF. Um, in the Door Neighbourhood Plan case, uh, it's at a very early stage. Um, so it starts off from a, a footing of, of very limited weight, um, but the, the stage it's reached in terms of um, consultation is quite important. And, and it, it hasn't gone through in any form of consultation yet in public um, because the consultation exercise that was due to commence um, was paused because of the COVID outbreak. Um, so it's not possible to say whether there are any objections or indeed whether they're resolved um, or unresolved. So because of that, it, it has virtually no, no weight in, in that regard. And then in addition, what we've done is looked at the policies that the Dover Village Society have referred to, and we've identified within the report why we feel that they're um, not compliant with the MPPF, and, and therefore why they should be given no weight. So in a nutshell, that's saying that the Dover Village Plan shouldn't be given weight. Um, I just wanted to kind of try and clarify that. I know it's quite a difficult area. Um, I'll let Helen answer the questions about car parking in a moment, I think. Yeah, thank you, uh, Helen. In terms of um, the reason I, I went perhaps on a little bit further than I would have done in showing the presentation was to try and give you a, a feeling for positions relative to other dwellings. Um, and I won't say any more about the overlooking situation. I think I explained that before. Uh, in terms of um, number five and, and Mr Yates's property, um, that it, it's, it's, it's perpendicular to this block. I can share, I will, I will share the screen again very briefly, Chair, if, if you don't mind, just to yeah, re course. remind members where that is. Um, so, number, number five uh, is, is this property here. The, the new property is going here. To all intents and purposes on the same footprint, albeit enlarged uh, uh, than the existing one, the, the outlook is in this direction. Um, so uh, the, there is no direct overlooking between the two properties. Um, and the point was being made by Mr Yates about uh, it being overbearing. Uh, we calculate it's approximately 18 metres from the nearest portion of the uh, property to the nearest portion of the other um, and, and at an angle uh, and, and we don't feel that that uh, is overbearing in, in the wider context chair. Um, I'll, I'll stop sharing because I think that was the main, main point about that. Lovely. Uh, um, in terms of uh, it being overbearing uh, and too large and out of scale as I said in the introduction um, 
it, it is two storage essentially with additional accommodation within the gables that that's quite common within the within the door area it's a large block but it's set within a large um, site again that's a common feature of the door area um, it is taller at the back that's uh, as a result of the excavation that's taking place to access the um, well, as a result of topography, but also as a result of the ex ex excavation that's taking place to enable access to the uh, um, underground uh, car parking and rubber storage facilities. Um, we don't feel that that elevation is, is prominent in public views. The footpath uh, is well screened by vegetation um, that would, in the main, um, remain on the site. Uh, that the, foot, the vegetation near the footpath is in part being removed. Um, but we don't feel that that elevation features prominently in the public domain chair, which is why uh, we, we feel that it's acceptable. Um, so if I can just ask Helen to comment on the car parking near highway situation, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, if, if I address it in two separate sections really you know that the, we'll talk about the traffic generation um and then the parking in terms of the level of traffic generated by the the proposed development obviously we do accept that there is going to be an increase in traffic however we have looked carefully at the the sort of prevailing characteristics of the road network um and taken that into account and we do feel that the the level of traffic will be albeit an increase relatively low um, and consequently think that that can be accommodated safely on the existing road network. Um, in terms of the parking, I think as Mr Northern said quite rightly, our guidelines are maximums. Um, and so within that respect, the, the, the provision of 14 spaces falls within our guidelines. Um, I would accept that probably a slightly higher provision would be preferable um, but certainly the, they are providing parking two spaces for each of the three bed apartments which are obviously the ones that are more that are more likely to have uh, two cars and there is also some visitor parking on the site which is also welcome so on balance i don't feel that it would be reasonable to refuse this application on what would essentially be potentially a shortfall of six spaces on, on the, the maximum provision that would be acceptable. Um, we do accept, obviously, that the site is within walking distance of Door Village Centre and there are a number of facilities there for people as well. Um, so as I say, I think that would be the comments from the highway perspective. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I'm going to open it to questions. Councillor Davidson indicated. Does anyone else have any questions? Councillor Garbutt, Councillor Sangar. Okay, so okay, Councillor Davison, you were first. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, before before I ask any questions, um, is it isn't it normal practice just to uh, uh, you know for those who went on the site visit to to give a talk about uh, what what they observed? We aren't doing that, and we've discussed that at previous meetings. Okay, all right. Many uh, members go in their own time because of COVID, so okay. it would be different weather and all of this. So I accept what you're saying. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Um, yes, I'd, I'd, for, I'd forgotten that, but um, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's, it's understandable, yeah. Um, it, it's, it, although it looks like a square on the, on the map, it's essential three rect rectangles because you've got the front, the, uh, the building itself and then uh, the rear. Uh, there's one entrance. So can you uh, explain, um, uh, I have to use Chris, for, uh, this is a, one for you, Chris, um, the, uh, how the e exit and entrance uh, would be um, uh, performed with, with, with the cars, just the one exit, uh, entrance and exit. Uh, yeah, the, there's, the, there's scope uh, within the site. Uh, the, the immediate access uh, wouldn't necessarily allow the passage of two vehicles, but there is scope yeah. within the site for um, uh, people to wait as, as other people are entering. Um, so it, it, it will function in, in that manner. Um, it's not wide enough for um, 
a full kind of in and out uh, arrangement. Um, but we feel that's a, a better situation than, than opening up the frontage more. Uh, it's a more attractive feature and, uh, and I think the um, the level of traffic that will use the the uh, the site, which will nine times out of ten be familiar traffic, uh, will be able to deal with that situation uh, adequately. Okay, but um, the, the, you've got corners there, so uh, one you might not be able to see a trap, um, you know, any traffic coming around a corner uh, unless there was a mirror there. Uh, how are we going to cope with that one? This might be more of a question for Helen Chair. If, uh, yeah, that... absolutely. Yeah, Helen. Chair, certainly, uh, anything like a mirror, we would not, we would not support that at all. There are far too many problems with the placement of mirrors, whether it be on the highway or actually within development sites. Um, I think the, the the thing is, it's a question of the likelihood of two vehicles meeting. Um, certainly at the entrance, I mean, you have got a wide verge and so people can wait there at the entrance to, to get past. The visibility is acceptable for people to, to, you know, to be able to see each other so they can slow to manoeuvre. Um, so I think, you know, we, we're talking essentially about potentially 14 vehicles. You maybe get probably once, twice a day that somebody might actually meet. Um, but it's certainly not going to be anything that is going to be, you know, a regular regular occurrence or actually cause any problem on the highway. Right. Will the, will the parking can space... I, I'm sorry. Can I... Can I through the chair, Councillor Davidson? I, mean... no, I do apologise. It's, it's uh, OK. Chair, <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, are the parking spaces allocated to each of the apartments? And I mean, that could be an important point. Yeah, as I understand it, the car parking spaces are going to be allocated on the basis of two spaces for the three bedroom departments, one space for the two bedroom apartments, which will then have two visitor parking spaces. So I would expect the spaces to be allocated, yes. Okay. So, and that again it is meaning that you're not going to get people, people are going to come in knowing that they've got a parking space in effect, not coming in thinking, oh, am I going to get somewhere to park or not? So, which again cuts down on the potential for people meeting, manoeuvring, turning around, you know, coming out without, excuse me, without a parking space. Yeah. Will, will there be a, 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 enough room to turn around the car? Uh, or will it have to reverse out? No, Chair, there's adequate manoeuvring on site for people to enter and exit in a forward gear. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Garbutt. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I have interpreted this rightly, um, the northern boundary of this site uh, currently has um, bushes and uh, a cherry tree. I'm, am I right in saying that? I think that's um, just by number five, between the development and number five. Um, and I think the proposal is to bring down most of this, uh, um, uh, most of these bushes and the cherry tree. Um, so, and, and there's a lane just the other side of that, which which formed the, the boundary for the conservation area. Um, so, how is that boundary going to be? Uh, what what is it going to consist of now? If you're pulling down the bushes and the cherry tree, um, is it is it going to provide adequate uh, protection between the uh, you know number five and the the development and the the pathway, etc. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chair, uh, that, that's correct. Um, the, is the answer to the first question. Um, the northern boundary does have, there's a, a, as members who've been to the site will be aware, there's a, as the site, as the, uh, the site falls, or the levels fall within the site, sorry, um, that creates the, um, a level difference between the site and the public footpath. So the public footpath is already set at a higher level, um, although that also falls. Um, and there is a small retaining feature with some, some hedging on top of that. that. That is to be removed, as is the cherry tree that is down, which is set inside the site boundary by approximately five metres or so. Um, and that, that would also be removed. Um, 
there will be some vegetation retained in the uh, northeastern corner of the site, uh, approximately five, six metres length or so. Um, in terms of what goes back, uh, that there is a condition um, requiring details of that. Um, there will be limited scope uh, for additional planting at that point. Um, and, and then to answer the rest of the question in terms of what's then between the site and the footpath and, and number five, uh, there is um, there's a, a, a strip of semi-natural vegetation um, on the edge of the, the footpath, then the footpath width, and then further natural vegetation before um, private hedges, etc., belonging to the properties, including number five. So there's currently quite a substantial hedge um, on the uh, on the outer boundary of number five before you get to the the public footpath. But in terms of what goes back on the site and what will that look like, that's the subject of the condition. If you got a supplementary, Councillor Garbutt. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um, so I understand there are three parking places to be uh, placed along that northern edge, and um, I'm just uh, concerned. I, I understand also that some of the parking places will have green roofs, and some will have um, uh, um, some some. Uh, oh, I wish I didn't forget things. Um, <laughs> Some generating capacity on there. Uh, uh, so, so, those three are they going to have green roofs there, or are they going to be the ones with uh, the uh, the panels on there, the solar panels? Uh, Chair, no. The uh, the three that are on the northern boundary um, are, are are open surface uh, car parking spaces. Um, the the green roof occurs on a, on approximately 50-60% of the carport that houses eight spaces, and then the solar panels are on that as well. They're on the they're on the eastern boundary. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. That's, yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Sangar. Uh, th thank you, Chair. I, I, I mean, when we went went there yesterday, it clearly. Clearly, that horse chestnut is diseased, and there's nothing we can do about that. But just go back to the point Councillor Garbutt was making about the cherry tree. Was there any attempt made uh, in in discussions to save that mature cherry tree and in the back garden? Uh, Chair, I, I, I've been further checking the tree report, and that does advise that there are some health issues with the cherry tree. However, that's not the um, that's not the the, the key factor. It, it's it's affected by the position of the, the carport that's proposed uh, to achieve the car or, and all the car parking spaces, whichever way you want to look at that. It's not the building of the carport itself, it's the car parking provision uh, and the access there. To, it is affected by that. So it's, its removal is as much by necessity as um, for the development uh, as any concern about its health. Uh, okay, th 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 thanks for that. Well, can we just go, go back and just check that I've understood the slides correctly, that's sort of the slides 63, 64, 65, 66, uh, and you're saying that it is is 2.3 metres higher than the than, than, than the existing one, and it's particularly um, clear in those those two side elevations, 63 and 64, so I've got that right, we're talking about the new the proposal is 2.3 metres higher. Yeah, Chair, shall I sh share screen to confirm that? Yeah, please, yeah, be easier. Um, sorry, I'll get catch up in a moment. Um, <laughs> right, so the area within the report is that the is that the, the slide you referred to? That, that's the one I was now? referring to, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm but just, just checking, I've looked at the right green line and I've not misread that. Yeah, so the the references within the report to the height increases are to um, I mean, are to this this position here. Yeah. So the difference between there and there is two point three meters. Okay. Uh, 
and then it's a further one point. Uh, I've got the immediate reference in front of me, Chair. Just bear with me. It's a further 1.3 metres uh, to the top of these gables here. Uh, I think Council Sangar was referring to more these images. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I only have measurements, Chair, that, that would confirm yeah. the height from the ridge of this point here to the ridge which is hidden behind this gable uh, and then up again. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I'm afraid, have uh, any other references. I mean, clearly, the, from here to, to here yeah. is much more than 2.3 yeah. metres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, I think I think those diagrams, you know, you know, you know, do do demonstrate the, the proposal. So that that's that, that's clear in my mind. Thank you. Okay, Chair. that's the view uh, from just to be clear for members. That's the view from number or from the north. So from where number five is situated, right. which is which is sort of over here somewhere in yeah. in relation, um, and, and then that's the view from the south. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Have we any more questions from any more members? No? Any comments from any members? Councillor Davidson, Councillor Hurst. Councillor Davidson first. Yeah. <clears throat> Whilst I agree with um, what was stated about there being no particular, uh, particular architectural merit in the, uh, in the current building, uh, I think it probably applies to a new one as well, but um, the uh, I, I feel that it's uh, it is too much, and I think uh, you know I I, I would uh, be quite happy with um, uh, a smaller um, uh, a building, but uh, that one really is uh, is is too high, uh, as well as the uh, as one of the as well as the length, and it's taking up some. Uh, grass spaces uh, where the where the parking uh, is going to be, and um, I think uh, so. On the whole, I'm going to uh, vote against it. Right. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hurst. Thank you, Chair. Um, I actually think this is a reasonable attempt at a development whereby people can downsize from large unwieldy, expensive to manage properties and going to modern, uh, um, uh, a modern apartment, uh, which is cheaper and easier to run, but still remain in the um, location that they want. I actually think it's, it's, it's a positive move towards enabling people to live in the existing community while downsizing. Uh, and for that reason, I will be supporting it. Thank you. Councillor Sangar. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I will be opposing this. I, I think it's it's an overdevelopment of the site. It, it is much too high. It's at least a story too high. It, it's, it's too blocky. It's out of keeping with the surrounding area. Uh, it's overbearing, particularly in terms of uh, in terms of, of five and and, um, and 17 Vicarage Lane. Um, and I, I personally think the door neighbourhood plan that there, there were discussions in, in earlier in earlier drafts of it. I mean the whole neighbourhood plan process takes takes a long time. I know there have been consultations. Um, I think if that had all if, if the door neighbourhood plan had been you know, fully finished, this is not the, the the sort of site and the sort of development we would be going that high. So I just think it's overbearing and I will be voting against it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any more comments? No. I just want to make a comment that I agree with Councillor Hurst. Um, this was my home, my home area, and the one thing is the downsizing, which is a real problem, do you know, and it's been cried out for. So I think the development's exciting, and um, yeah, so I will be voting with the office of my recommendation. Right, we'll go to the vote then. Okay. Um, just one second, I'll just get this up, sorry. <clears throat> okay, the, re the proposal is the demolition of existing buildings and erection of a three to four storey building to form nine apartments, including a bike store, car parking, communal garden space and landscaping works. The recommendation is to grant conditionally. Uh, Councillor Sangar. Against, Chair. Councillor Downs. 
for Councillor Hurst. For Chair. Councillor McCann. Against. Councillor Rosling Josephs. For Chair. Councillor Davidson. Against Chair. Councillor Clarkson. Against Chair. Councillor Garbutt. Against Chair. Councillor Chaplin. Oh, Councillor Chaplin's disappeared. Chair, um, Councillor Chaplin left the meeting during the discussion at about 17.35. Uh, we okay. Sent him well, another invite. Uh, um, I've tried to call him, but there's no answer. Thank you. I didn't notice. Sorry, I was that busy concentrating. Um, okay. Well, I'll be voting for the rec officer recommendation. Could we just see where the tally is on that? Thank you. Chair, yeah, I've got um, four votes for and five votes against. Okay. So the offerman recommendation is lost. So. The application is refused. That's right, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay then. Right. I think that concludes uh, right. the. Yeah. So sorry, Chris. Sorry, yeah. I don't need to shout out that. Chair, no, 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 no. Right. Sorry, it's been a long. Yeah. Put it on mute. Um, Chair, we need reasons. Yeah. Oh, we've got. So sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. We're all getting. Uh, I've got. Yeah. We need reasons for refusal. So uh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> I know. I do apologise, yeah. Councillor Sangar. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm 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 keen to go for um, overdevelopment of the site, yeah. overbearing, and okay, out of, yeah. and out of character with with the area with, with the area. I I, do, I don't want to use the highways arguments um, and the parking spaces. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's significant. Okay, overdevelopment. Um, oh, and look out to the area. area. Yeah, Councillor yeah. Garbutt. <laughs> Yes, I was going to say that as well. I think it's an overdevelopment. I think that's, right. that's the one I'd rather go down. Okay, Councillor Davidson, are you anything Yeah, I would agree with those two. Uh, so you're going to second the... Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, then, so we're going with overdevelopment? Yeah, uh, can listen I, yeah. to Councillor Clarkson. Oh, Councillor Clarkson. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd like to say that it also impacts on the uh, conservation area, which is very close by as well. Um, well if I've put my tooth penithing on that, there's a, um, there's a few houses opposite that are very out of keeping. So I think that wouldn't really stand up. Do you know All what right. we saw? Yeah, All you right. know, but I take your point, but yeah. they are basically opposite. Yeah. So I think yeah. that, yeah, we want to, if we're going to refuse, we need to go with the, yeah. Okay, over development. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Yeah. Can I can I just clarify just yeah. just for completeness that um, I think Councillor Sanger mentioned um, character, which yeah, Councillor character. kind of yeah. picked up. So is is if is it overdevelopment based on the impact on amenity of surrounding residents and, and future residents, or is it overdevelopment based on the character of the area? I think that's something which probably is worth getting some clarification on. I think it's both. I think it's both yeah. of those. I mean, it's certainly, it's certainly the char character of both of five and the listed the listed buildings, um, and the and the character seventeen and nineteen. So it's overdevelopment in terms of it's different to those. But I do think it's out of character with the 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 rest of Vicarage Lane. As you walk down the rest of Vicarage Lane, this would be the highest building on 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 Vicarage Lane for quite a way. So I think I think summarise from what I'm hearing is that we it, it's overdevelopment. I think is the principal issue. Yeah. The consequences of overdevelopment are that it's going to have a harmful impact on the amenity of existing and future residents. Yeah. And it's going to have a harmful impact on the character of the area. And I guess not to put words in your mouth because I know it's been discussed and potentially dismissed, but intrinsically that that also relates. To to the adjacent conservation area because that forms part of the yeah. immediate character. Yeah, I think yeah. particularly the, the listed buildings complex. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, I think also the fact that uh, they, they will bring back a different plan, and uh, we may well agree with uh, a, a, another plan, but it's this one that uh, yeah. we're obviously. Uh, okay. We'll so, take your point, yeah. Councillor Davidson. Yes. Pardon? I've, I've taken your point on board. Yeah, okay, thank you, so Ryan. we um, the wording will come to myself and Councillor Ripon. 
Okay. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Right. That is absolutely fine. So anything else that we need to tie up on the end of this? Okay, well, uh, that concludes the meeting. Thank you. I know it's been a long agenda. Oh, Councillor McCann? Yeah, Chair, can I just ask, um, normally on the agendas at the end is uh, uh, lodged appeals and things like that, and reports. I've not seen any, seen any in the last couple of meetings. Can we have an update on those, please? Yeah, I was about to actually just ask Michael to clarify that, because I'd actually asked him to free me. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, Chair, I had that conversation with our administration team today mm. on that reporting, and the, the, that is that will come on the next agenda, Chair. Mm. Yeah, it was purely, yeah, but thank you for raising it. Yeah, lovely. So thank you for your patience. Um, yeah. We've worked really hard over just the... Very quickly, Chair, can we just yeah. agree the date and time of next meeting? Oh, that's what I'm going to do. That's Sorry. what I'm going to do. Sorry. Yeah, no. yeah, no worries at all. No worries at all. I just want to thank you all to say that we are on the homeward stretch of getting up to date with the planning committees. So I just wanted to thank and thank the public and the press. But it's been a really big challenge, but we've done extremely well and we've given every single hearing a full hearing, which I think is really important. And the date of the next meeting is Tuesday, the 25th of August at two o'clock. OK, thank you. Look after yourselves, everyone, and uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. 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 bye.